Hey, welcome everyone. It is, I don't know what day is this. Today's Tuesday, I believe, right? Um, as you guys may have known, I uh, just recently moved again, I'm trying to set things up. Got a little bit of a light in here today, a little bit of natural light. So hopefully uh, the green screen that I am using now will actually work properly. It didn't really work too well for the uh, non sequitur show last night. That was a lighting issue more than anything else. I am getting a ring light. It is being sent to me. Uh, and hopefully I should have fixed that problem. But anyways, uh, I was going to stream today, um, and it's funny because the, the thing I was going to talk about, it's kind of related to this, but it was a little bit more specific. Uh, first of all, make sure that everybody can hear me out there. Um, hi, Josiah. I see you out there. Uh, let me know if the audio is okay. Somebody said the audio last night was kind of messed up. I didn't hear any audio problems last night on the show. And so the person who left a comment that the audio is bad may have been on their end because nobody else said anything about the audio. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I was going to do a little bit of a stream on like what happened to me the other day being kicked out of another atheist group, right? Uh, this one is one of the larger ones. It's like 30,000, although it's not really active. It's kind of funny. You have 30,000, but you get about, you know, six people that are commenting usually. And then when I post something, those are the ones that get the most generation of comments. Go figure. But I was kicked out, and, and the admin literally had posted something so stupid, something along the lines of 0 0.9. He said 0 0.999 equals 1 is one of the dumbest things ever, and Lawrence Krauss wouldn't even agree with you on that, Steve. And I'm like, that's not what I argued. That's never what I said. There's a huge difference between 0 0.9999 and 0 0.999 repeating. And obviously, he didn't even he didn't care. Um, he was just mad because I had given him my atheist semantic, semantic collapse argument. Uh, he couldn't find anything wrong with it. He didn't even believe that I wrote it. I mean, that's all dishonest. That's all dishonest atheists has, have become. When they cannot refute your argument, they'll resort to dishonest techniques like, oh, uh, well, I don't even believe that this is your argument. Well, who the hell else is it? Um, I mean, I wrote it. I got over it live. Um, who, who, who else has an atheist semantic collapse argument other than myself? Now, granted, it's predicated and derived from other works, but whose isn't? I mean, every argument is derived from some other work, but at least I give an attestation and I give credit that my work is derived through um, Oppie's work and Demi's work. But my argument is novel, uh, unique, I think, because it, it basically uses the approach of the square of opposition to show that these words have no value when you've diminished them to the capacities of, of having no content. They just mean the same thing. They're vague, they're ambiguous. And so anyways, so, so that admin like, you know, suspended me from being able to comment after he made that comment. So he straw manned me, right? This is what I'm saying by dishonest mods. He straw manned me and then prevented me from commenting, commenting, oh, I can't talk today, commenting on it. Uh, that is dishonest. And what I'm finding out is that more and more atheists in the atheist community are falling for these traps of intellectual dishonesty. And they're making all the non-believers look bad. All of us are non-believers. Well, most of the people that follow my show uh, are non-believers. Um, there's different degrees of non-belief. There are people that uh, are agnostic. There are people that believe there are no gods. There are people that are anti-theist, and that's fine. Uh, but all of them have one thing in common. They don't believe God exists. Okay, great. Now, it's funny because the person we're going to be talking about today, Courtney, um, just, just made this very point is that the, she's like, the one thing that all non-believers have in common is they don't believe in God. Well, yeah, but the one thing that all theists have in common is they don't believe God does not exist. So it's not a really, a really intelligent way to utilize a word in the negative. I mean, all of us are non-ducks. Who cares? All of us are non-cars. Who cares? What we're not is irrelevant to what we want to talk about, which is our positions, our beliefs. And so uh, I was going to do a little bit of a unleashed uh, on that particular thing with that uh, admin, but I don't think it's really of any major significance. If you want to go to my Facebook page, or my Twitter, you can, you can read about it. But, you know, it, it's, it's typical because I'm not the only one this happens to. I'm, I've seen it happen where very intelligent, very articulate, very erudite, very wise people that know their topics, such as Tim O'Neill, uh, get the same crap. You know, uh, during Christmas time, it comes around every year, the whole pagan Christmas uh, thing. And, and Courtney's really big into that, even though she's been corrected many, 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 many times that Tim has been kind of shunned 
from the atheist community because he puts out correct information. I have been shunned from the atheist community because I put out correct information. Uh, and other people like Joe from Answers and Reason or Trolley uh, Dave, a lot of people have been shunned for putting out misinformation, or excuse me, for putting out correct information, and they don't want to try to even assail them. I mean, they've gotten to the point where it's just, they just by fiat say that anybody who disagrees with them is wrong. It's, it, and I hate using the word cult because that cult has such a stigma to it, right? The word cult has, has emotionally laden charges to it, but there are some reasons to say it's a cult-like mentality. You don't, you don't agree with me, you're excised, right? You're, you're, you're removed from the, from the church of atheism. You're a, her, you're a heretic. And it's unfortunate because the atheist community was supposed to be the group that be the critical thinkers, right? The, the skeptics, the people that are really heavy into science. And most of them get science wrong. A lot of them don't understand science very well. And so the entire atheist community has been hijacked by people that are mostly ex-fundies, like Courtney, that have the same mindset for religiosity, but has just substituted Christianity for atheism. They've not learned anything. They've not educated themselves. Courtney is, is uh, you know, one of the more well-known atheists out there on Twitter. And I have nothing against her personally. We've got along. Um, this is not, you know, a personal attack toward her. But she knows nothing about atheism. She's incompetent when it comes to atheism. And she's been corrected over and over and over again. So I, I want to make the argument that I think that she's just gone full troll now. And she's used, to, from my understanding, she used to be a funny Christian. And she used to troll atheists. And she used to use the same rhetoric on atheists that she's doing now. I don't see any difference. She is literally trolling atheists. She's not trolling the Christians. She's trolling the atheist. And yet this is supposed to be the, or the group that she's a part of. And I don't see the point of that unless it's for ego or attention. Right? What's the point of putting out misinformation on Twitter just to get a rise out of people and you're trying to troll them? I, I, I find it to be egregious, morally egregious, because here's somebody who has a platform that could reach a lot of people, but instead of utilizing it for good, instead of utilizing it to educate, she's using it to feed her own ego to troll other atheists. Why? And by the way, there's a phone number you guys can call. There's a link above you. This is an open hangout. Please join. Let me know uh, what you think. Uh, I, I'm, I'll take any of your questions. Uh, I, it's so funny because just recently, like about 10 minutes before I went on air, uh, Darth myself was talking to this guy that I don't know what the hell, who he was, um, crossword geek or square geek or crossword puzzle or whatever. And he had just by fiat said, you know, you're, you're wrong to Darth or something. Incorrect. He said it was incorrect. And I'm like, okay, look, you can say something's incorrect, but give you reasons. When I say you're incorrect, I give a reason why. Now, maybe I don't go into full detail because I'm going to be wasting my time going into full detail. But at least say you're incorrect. Here's a blurb as to why. If you want to go talk more about it, that's fine. So I asked the guy, I said, what is wrong with Dart's statement? Matter of fact, what is, we said was point, you know, spot on, you know. And I was like, so what is it about his statement that is incorrect? Ask him for evidence. You make a claim. Back it up with something at least, right? What do you think that person did? Uh, you get three guesses, the first two don't count. What do you think he did? Yeah, you already know. Yeah, he blocked me for asking for evidence. This is the atheist community. This is the skeptic community. You're not allowed to ask for evidence unless, you know, <laughs> you're going against a creationist or you're going against a flat earther. Then it's fine. Going against another non-believer, nope. Cannot ask a non-believer for evidence. It's against their religion. Now, make, make, I'm going to make this very clear. Atheism is not a religion, but these people are religious. In, in, that, in their mindset, there's religiosity. I'm just going to flat out put that out there from here on out. People like Courtney are still religious, but it's just an atheist religion. Um, but that in itself does not make atheism a religion. It's not. Uh, but that doesn't mean you don't have the same non-thinking, non-critical thinking at least, non-skeptical mindset that atheist trolls like Courtney uh, fall into because all they do is they take their, their, their religion, they lose the belief in God, but they, they don't automatically magically become better thinkers, right? Robert X says, what's the quote correct meaning of atheism then? Well, what does he mean by correct? 
Definitions are descriptive, right? They don't prescribe usages in, in a colloquial dictionary. They don't say this is how you must use the word. This is say this is how the word is being used in what's called synchronic usage, which means in, in the time period rather than diachronic. So synchronic usage is okay. What is it? How is this word being used? The word atheism is being used two different ways now because atheists like Courtney have decided to try to muddy the waters and they've tried to push this narrative that atheism is merely a lack of belief. So it's confusing what the people mean by atheism. It used to be fine. You know what an atheist was or somebody who believed that didn't, gods didn't exist. Now, what do you mean by atheism? It's really, con it sucks because now you have to ask more questions to find out what a person actually believes. And so there's not any correct definition. It's just, you're going to make an argument which one's more useful. There's utility arguments to be had. But there are facts in the matter to be had. There are objective facts. An objective fact is in philosophy, the overwhelming understanding of the word atheism is the belief, the view, or doctrine that God does not exist. That's it. Right? That's ubiquitous in philosophy. Anybody who's ever read a paper on philosophy would know this. It's literally, anytime you go read about atheism, that's what you're going to find in the, in the academic world, right? You go read some new atheist book about Hawk, uh, uh, Dawkins or um, Hitchens, and then that, that may not be the case, right? But in philosophy, the the, the understanding for these terms are well set because, you know, when you're reading a paper, you want to make sure you know what the author means unless he means it in a different way. And usually they tell you, they say, well, you know, I'm using it this way, which is perfectly fine to do. You can do that. If you want to say, look, I'm using this word, but I mean it in this context. Great. I think you should do that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why I'm a descriptivist, right? I've been, I've been labeled a prescriptivist by people that are dishonest. It's like, no, I actually say words describe. They don't prescribe. Now, there are exceptions, obviously, in mathematics and logic. Uh, words could be pres prescribed. I mean, or like we know things are mathematically defined in maths. So, right? so those are, the speed of light is math is literally defined to be a, a specific meters per second. Right. It's, that's what it's defined to be. It's not describing. It is prescribing that usage. But that's very rare. For these types of, of words. Um, Monty says, you mean there are dogmatic as theists? Absolutely. This is, they're dogmatic, and the fact that they form their own little isol isolated echo chambers, excluding the people that understand these things, right? The people that follow my Twitter, I consider to be the more educated of the atheist. Because if you've noticed, I don't have a lot, I don't have a lot, a lot of dumb atheists who follow me. I, I just don't. Uh, and it's probably because they wouldn't get along with me too well. But I mean, for the most part, it's just they lack the skill set to really uh, talk about the topics in a level that most of us want to talk about. So I, I, I do consider that the people that follow me are the more intelligent of the atheists. Now, of course, I might be biased on that because they follow me, so they can't be too stupid. But I, I see all of them making the same points to people like Courtney over and over and over and over again. Matter of fact, again, going back to the whole pagan thing, Tim O'Neill and I forget the other person's name brilliantly have written some stuff about the origins of the these um, things that we have for Christmas, the tree, the Yule log, and things of that nature. And, and it wasn't from pagan origins. Matter of fact, the Zygus just totally takes these stories and, and they, they promote them so much that people believe them. But when you actually go investigate them and you read about them, none of these things are true. You know, the whole when was Jesus born and Horus and all these other stories, none of them are true. Mithra. But yet every year they come around and people like, Courtney, who I believe is an atheist troll, trolling atheist, perpetuate those things. And then Tim will, again, correct her, and other people correct her, and she doesn't care. She's getting, you know, people that like her things. She's getting people that are uh, talking about it. But it's trolling atheists is what it is. So, anyways, I got uh, Mr. Sirius in here. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can, but why is my chat box not coming up? Who knows? Uh, Any production issues? No, I just I noticed my chat's not on the screen. I'm gonna fix that while you talk. Give me a second. All right. All right. Well, well I really appreciate you calling me or trying to call me educated. Um, I, I feel very layman, but at the same time, I do try to listen. And uh, here, let me make sure I pull up chat. I do. I do want to read chat while I talk to you. Um, well, educated very, doesn't mean have to be formal. You can you could like just be you know educated by learning things on your own. There is nothing wrong with that. That's how I learned most of my stuff. Yep. I mean, it, quite literally, if you just keep your ears open 
uh, I think that all of this is quite easy to understand. You just have to make sure that you don't fall into the trap of trying to trying to like think that, okay, I have it figured out, therefore the way I have it is the right way. Like I will let somebody else have their way of understanding it. Like if you understand atheism in a way, let me know the way you understand it. But don't tell me my way of understanding it is wrong. Well, and that's the difference, right? I mean, I mean, and we're going to go over some of the things you guys said on Twitter, but she's making categorical statements, which are just wrong. I mean, there is right or wrong that can be objectively be evaluate, evaluated. And when you say something like atheism only has one meaning, you're objectively wrong. There is there's no way around that. You're done. Um, and that's why I think she's just doing the troll. She knows it's wrong. I've seen her play this game before. She does it for attention. She's getting it. She's getting attention from me. But I want people to recognize that the attention she's getting is the same negative attention that theists would use to go troll people in atheist groups. Like, you know, oh, you're a descendant, you believe you're descended from monkey kind of stuff. She's on that level. There's, no, there's absolutely no difference to me about her trolling technique. It's just the same thing as you would find from a fundy creationist or a flat earther. She's the atheist version of a flat earther doing the same thing just to get a rise out of people. I mean, it's kind of like... Uh, I mean, it's basically like almost any belief system. And I know people like to say that oh, atheism isn't a belief. It's a lack of belief, whatever. It is a some kind of belief, even if a lack of whatever. Like when it comes to like Christianity, there's lots of branches. OK, like you can't just say there's only one way to do it. There's not one way to do the belief in Jesus. There's not only one way to do a belief in Muhammad. Like a lot of people really wish there was. A whole lot of people, really fundamental cultist people, would love to like take a bunch of like machine guns and force people into believing that way. A whole lot of people would, but that that same way can't also be applied in atheism. I'm sorry, it's like you got to let people like have their way, and you can't like force people all down the, like one path. Well, it's that's that, but that's what they try to do, right? Is either believe the way we believe. Or you're excised, you're you're excommunicated from the Church of Atheism, and you're inher you're heretical. Like I said, I had people, you know, that think I'm an idiot merely because I'm able to cite sources, that I'm able to quote experts, and they they will say, "Well, that's a fallacious argumentium ad vericandium or uh, appeal to authority." It's like, no, you're allowed to cite experts when they're experts of the field in a field that you're uh, that's under discussion. There's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely, in fact, this is buttressing your arguments. Right? You're not saying, hey, look, the expert's saying this, therefore it's true. You're saying, I'm telling you this, and the experts happen to agree with this, adding validity that what you're saying is probably correct. That's it. No, nobody's saying that I'm, like, th this guy said it, so therefore it's right. Nobody's saying that. It's like, look, I, like, like I'm a layman, so therefore if I want to say something like, um, I believe in blank. I may, not, I may believe in blank, not because I have any... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, like any, like I've never, may have never have done this thing before. I may not have any, um, oh gosh, what's the word? How have I lost this word? Mm -hmm. What's what were you searching for? Like, um, like if you've done something or not, like if you have any, um, um, oh my gosh, it's such a simple word. This, this damn medication I take makes me lose words. Um, yeah, I wish I could help you. Experience. Oh my gosh, experience Exper is the experience. word. Experience. <laughs> the, the, big, the big E word, okay. <laughs> so I may mean, not have had any experience. So I look for other people who have had experience or some like, like they have may have experience on levels that I may never ever have. This is just like a, a trap that flat earthers fall into. It's like they will do like uh, experiments on levels that are so like mundane. And and there there are people out there with equipment that is like like stuff that they'll never touch, stuff that they'll never get their hands on. And instead of going, okay, I will just you know give it to them that they like they'll have experiences that I will never see in my life. Like th like thank goodness there are people out there who will even touch these heights. And maybe I can just you know just take their expertise and maybe just just borrow from it because thank goodness people like this exist that I can even borrow from this expertise. And, 
but no they don't do that they're just like um that guy that guy he he doesn't believe in what i say so therefore he's you know uh that's a conspiracy and that's a conspiracy and that's a conspiracy like that's not how it works like when somebody says this expert says this i'm gonna borrow from the, his expertise you know yes. that's kind of why not i mean that's Look, everybody has their own little things that they know about, right? And so, even though my chat here is about as dookie as it gets, it's going to have to work. Um, but you do rely on people that know more than you on certain topics, which is going to be just about everybody. I mean, Tim Tim's expertise is history. So when it comes to history, you know, I'm going to defer to him. One, he's got the experience, the big E word. He's got the reputation. And he's demonstrated that he multiple times that he knows what he's talking about. And his, and his, and his citations are correct. And anybody can go objectively evaluate these things. And so, uh, Manya says, I've reached godhood. Bow to me, mortals. <laughs> 25 months. Yes. <laughs> I'll hail Manya. Two years. Manya. Wow. We... My goodness. She's godhead. She's god mode. Maybe, she, maybe you're a theist. Manya has demonstrated that she's a god. I'm a monotheist with a lower G. Monotheist. <laughs> mon, mon God. <laughs> Monia God. <laughs> yes, thank you, Monia, for uh, two, two years. You know, I adore you. Uh, okay, so I, I was ignoring the chat. I saw some people messaged me, but I was trying to, to get the chat on the screen so people could see it. Uh, I don't know why it's not coming up the way it normally does. I have logged into Stream Elements and Streamlabs, but it's not working. Um, but anyways, so let's kind of let's kind of go over what what Courtney was saying here. Um, so in this Twitter thing, right? So she says, and again, she I I don't think she's dumb. I don't think Courtney's dumb. I think she's manipulative. I think she does it on purpose. I think she's willfully going out of her way to lie to people to troll. But I don't think she's a dumb person. I think this is this is planned. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So she says there is only one type of atheism: lack of belief in gods. Well, we already know that's false. I mean, that's a categorical statement that we, she has been explained multiple times is wrong. Which, so she's already starting off trying to, you know, trying to uh, stir the pot, right? To try to get people to go, oh, well, hey, Courtney, that's wrong. Because she knows she's going to get response for this, right? She's no people are going to say, Courtney, you're wrong, and that's for the billionth time. That's her goal, well, uh, trolling. I mean, this is like in cult initiation uh, talk right here. That's like people trying to, like... You know, there's only one kind of Christianity. There's only one kind of, you know, like there's only one kind of anything. Just, 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 just you know, come to my cult, you know, wear this clothes. It is the same thing, right? Yeah. There's only one true Christian. There's only the same thing when she was probably a funny. There's only one true God. There's only one true religion. Now there's only one true atheism. She has not changed her mindset. She's still that fundy Christian, but she's just part of the, the religion of atheists, new atheism, TM. Uh, she's, she's in. She's just a member of that now. She's a high priestess in the in the Church of Atheism. And again, I'm not trying to say atheism is religion. Uh, there are religious, you know, groups that are atheist. Uh, but she well, has the same exact mindset of any fundy I've ever seen. I will say this: anybody who says there's only one type of atheism, that I would say is a religion. Of course, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Um, she has. What do you want? I mean, I don't know what to call this religion. Uh, besides, I call it. I call it New Atheism TM. That's uh, people know that's what my uh, you, I, I by the way I didn't create that but New Atheism trademark is somebody somebody did that a long time ago I don't know who the hell it was from some some board but that to me is the religion that I will say that New Atheism TM, TM at this point is a religion because it is exactly like every other religion I've seen don't ask questions feel free to lie to the infidel if you get results out of it right and there's like a dogma that you have to believe and don't question yeah. <clears throat> and um it's uh. I mean, it's it's like it used to be just like uh, uh, based on a a one singular kind of um, what do you call it? answer to a to a question or to a belief, and uh, well, I mean, what do you call it? Um, I mean, this isn't even accurate. Like a lack of belief in gods could be couldn't that be also agnosticism? Sure. And you know what? Well, non-belief. It's just, it's just, it's a not, it's a non-theist, right? So you have theist. Okay. Anytime you have a set, you have a complement set, right? So you have a theist, you have not theist. Dog, not dog. Car, not car, right? So it's, it's not dog, cat. It's not theist or cat. It is theist, not theist. You just put a not in front of it. That's all you do to get the complementary set, right? But right. 
they make it oh well i'm gonna i'm gonna relabel not theism as atheism it's called i call it a semantic substitution very dishonest because Mm. now you're creating a false disjunction right i'm creating an arbitrary disjunction that there's only two categories when we know there's more so if i said mr serious or dog not mr serious therefore dog you're a dog if you're not mr serious everybody who's not mr serious now is a dog i'm a dog everybody in my life has a dog you can't get out of that's logic but do we do we actually believe that's only two categories, dog or Mr. Serious? No. We know I mean, that's not. like that's like like con men logic kind of stuff. Like that's that's awful. But that's like, well, that's what the level, salesman stuff. Is she any different than Ken Hoven at this point? No. There you go. She's doing what Ken Hoven does. She's conning people to get a rise out of them, which is a form of trolling. Because I don't think for a second Ken believes his own nonsense any longer. He may have one time. I don't know. But I think he's just so duplicitous and dishonest that it's hard for me to imagine that he believes his own nonsense because I hear the way he argues and he argues deceptively, willfully deceptively. And I think that indicates to me that he doesn't believe his own nonsense because when I've discussed these topics um, with people that are true believers, you can really kind of sense a difference, right? I mean, is it is it trolling or is this somebody like trying to uh, like garner a, um, a following or well, trying yeah. to get cheap? She has a following, um, but is trolling. Uh, but again, she's tro- She's not trolling people like me who will call this out. This is not trolling me. Uh, this is she's trolling other atheists who just believe this. You know, read what she says and believes it by fiat rather than have any kind of intellectual honesty to go say, mm, "Is this really correct?" Well, of course it's not correct. We know it's false. It's demonstrably false, right? And then she's and then it gets worse though. Sort of. Does she get? Does she get money? I'm sure she makes, yeah, but I don't think she does it for the money. I think she does it for the attention. Oh. Yeah, because she's got popularity because she virtue signaled her way up the atheist, you know, chain of popularity, as she's known as Godless Mom. She has a blog, uh, but it's all low level, does not, I mean, it's so low level stuff. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like putting a crucifix in a jar of urine and calling it art level. Right? Anybody can do the stuff she does. It, it's, you don't have to know crap about anything. You just have to uh, you know, show up and throw a stupid argument out, and people are like, "Yeah, that's great." I'd be like, "God's dead!" Yay, go Steve! You know, Christ never existed. <laughs> Mythicism. Yay, go Steve! You yeah, know, I mean, no talent. That's exactly what like Kathy is saying. Like, new atheism is comprised of ACA parrots. Like, that's all you got to do. Yes. Well, and why do you think I never made a big in the atheist community? Because I dare speak against the Church of the ACA. Right. Well, you you wanted to like challenge yourself, and that's not what the ACA is all about at all. No, they're a political organization. All they give a shit about fundraising to to promote their own, um, you know, their own group. They don't give a shit about the missions, correct or not. I know that for a fact. I've talked to Pam, Pam Whistle, who is the director for American Atheists. She told me straight out, Steve, American Atheism is not a philosophical organization. People should not be using us for philosophical information. We're there to promote. Um, Demogra- get demographics for people to, to vote so we can get theists and Christians out of office. That's what she told me. She's, she's like, it doesn't, she doesn't care whether what's on there is true or not, which is, again, lie to the infidel so long as it has results. It's a form of consequentialism. That's, that's, her, that's her, her, the, the ethics of the, of the new, tr- new atheist TM is, hey, if it gets results. Now, I, I, I understand the need to do that. I understand the need to change the the political landscape, to have more people represented, to have more non-believers, right? I get that. I'm not against that. I'm a secularist. But if you don't do so honestly, what have you accomplished? Because you're, I mean, because you're shooting yourself in the foot in the long run. Because if people find out what you're doing, it's going to make them feel like a bunch of scummy like lying like religious people again right and they're taking unnecessary shortcuts like yeah i mean i'm sure there's a lot of people out there that used to listen to the aca and go damn you know back then i was one of those types but you know i decided to read a book i decided to listen to steve i decided to read Oppie. i decided to read mackie you know i mean seriously if you're an atheist and you haven't read mackie you know the miracle of theism uh, or even you know any anything similar or any of Oppie's papers you've done yourself a disservice um Ghost Dog, uh, oh, he's God Mode too. He's made he's made uh, God Mode. Twenty five months. Atheist has as many branches of faith. So bad troll. Yeah, there's a, that's true. There's a lot of branches of um, 
of atheism. They say it's only one thing, but get two atheists in a room and you can't have them agree on anything besides they they don't believe. So what? I, I I don't know why that's something to even be be discussed. I mean, look, I don't believe a lot of things, you know, but I don't I don't go around forming an organ, organizations that what I don't believe. You know, you don't promote except, what you don't believe. You promote what you believe to be true. Your convictions, except for the fact that you don't believe, may not necessarily make you an atheist. Correct. But why would you make a group on what you don't believe? You base something on your convictions, and she has no convictions. She, she, I don't know. Nobody knows what the hell her positions even are because they're so all over, all over, so all, all over the place. I mean, so she says, sure, some atheists make the claim that there's no gods exist, but that's not atheism. Literally, it is the, atheism is a claim that God does not exist. You can go read a paper on this. Graham Oppie, atheism is a claim that God does not exist. That's in his works. That is in his. He writes the material for college. Right? I mean... It, you mean people who know? You mean the, the, the people who actually go out to, like, obtain this knowledge on any kind of, like, um, fundamental level? level? Academic yeah. level, yeah. Yeah. But so, so, not, so what is her qualifications to say something that is categorically false over somebody who actually has a PhD and studies this particular topic? I, I'm, just, I'm just curious what... what what her qualifications are to say Graham Oppie, one of the most prolific um, atheist philosophers of our generation, is is wrong. Oh, oh, you know what her qualifications are? She listened to Matt a few times, I'm certain. Ah, That's, she's, watched, some good she's watched the AXP that must uh, qualify her to make categorically false statements like that. Gotcha. Well, I mean, if you've listened to Matt talk, then you know everything there is to know about philosophy. <laughs> Let me see if I can bring this up real quick. Um, let me see here. Can you can you read that on the outside there? A, this is from Graham Oppie's uh, uh, um, uh, companion to atheism philosophy. Quote, atheism is the claim there are no gods. Atheists believe that there are no gods. Right there, atheism wow. is the claim. I mean, Courtney, this is a peer review paper from a guy that writes the books. Literally writes the books on the, on the, on the, on the subject. I, I didn't see a stutter in there. So she's out there, tell, again, this is what I'm saying, she's trolling atheists, that saying that, um, that it's not... The position that's not the claim. Of course it is. And then, then, she gets, then she gets even worse, right? It gets like bad to worse to worse. And she says, this is a knowledge claim. An atheist is a position on belief, not knowledge. No, there's nothing about knowledge by saying that. This is a belief claim. All propositions in the dosastic domain are beliefs. When I say a proposition is true, it is normative. That is a belief. That's why you predicate it with B and not K. So if I say, I believe it is the case that the sky is blue, I am giving you a dosastic belief, which is belief, position. This is normative in philosophy. You don't say the, the sky is blue. Oh, that's a no you're making a claim of knowledge. No, if I was making a claim of knowledge, I say, I know the sky is blue. Everybody that's ever read anything on philosophy would know this. This is like basic as you can get. So you know what you know what's funny? I, did, I just <laughs> had this. Uh, I just had this come back to my mind, and this is this is hilarious. And this is totally relevant to this, but this is a sidetracking thing. I was telling this to my friend, like telling him straight to his face that uh, like there's a belief in the and the knowledge or, or a, um, like uh, uh, like exactly what she said there that that uh, that uh, knowing or the uh, cod that that saying that like a, a, atheism is a uh, the claim that no, uh, there is no god is a is a knowledge claim yeah and he told me straight to my face that i was wrong and i looked at him and i had couldn't I didn't have a rebuttal but i thought man you are a dick and what? he was like a friend of mine but i just just thought about this like just in my head like I, I had nothing to come back to him about but i did i totally forgot about me thinking this in my head and he was totally right and but he'd been to college and I had not. Mm -hmm. And so he must have done, had a college course on this. And I didn't even think about that till just now, that he probably went to college on this. And that's why he knew I was wrong. Well, yeah, or it either went to college or, you know, read up on it, right? Uh, hang on, I gotta, I gotta fix that real quick. And then I'll read the super chat. Um, 
One sec. Uh, okay. Um, Ascot, five pounds. Twitter, new atheism is, quote, here are my pronouns. Here's my medical history. Here's my Patreon. Right. Uh, yeah, I, look, I don't get the whole pronoun in your bio thing. I just don't, but whatever. I mean, there might be some people where because of your avatar, it's ambiguous, and I understand that. But honest to God, do I have to put he in my in my bio? Would that make any sense to put he? Honestly, would, would that would do I need to give anybody that information? I, I just don't think it's pertinent to anything of any relevance to put my. There's so much other things I'd rather have in a bio than my pronouns, which is I, I, I'm, again, if your pronouns are something different than what people would may expect. By when they see you or talk to you, I get it. That's fine. But I mean, does Courtney really need to put her pronouns in there? I, I, I just, it just, it's silly to me. But that's a different issue. But yeah, so it goes back to knowledge, dude. How many people say um, they, they, they know God does not exist? Now it happens. Don't get me wrong. And, and more power them to them. I've never heard any of them really justify it very well. But most people say, look, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I believe there's no God, so I'm not saying it's knowledge, right? Because knowledge, as they understand, is a very, very specific term that requires very specific elements as necessary preconditions to be sufficient to say knowledge. And so I don't know many atheists that say, oh, using some theory of knowledge, there are no gods. Now, could there be? Yeah, absolutely. Um, could they justify it? Yeah. Would we ever be able to tell whether they're right or wrong? I don't think so. Right? It's just, it's just, they're claiming they have knowledge. That's all. I, anybody can claim they have knowledge. Sometimes you can demonstrate it, some you can't. I, I like, for example, I, I had to claim to have knowledge that I exist. I don't know how I really demonstrate that, except to myself, right? Gajito. But I think that we have a priori knowledge, which means that you don't have to go out and observe it. It's not empiricism. I can just by mathematical analytical reasoning go, oh, look. The law of identity is A equals A. I don't have to go A posteriori, find that out. And so I know A equals A. I could not be wrong on that. I could not, it cannot be wrong. It just, you cannot fail to have knowledge on that. But that's still a claim that I have knowledge, right? And, but I can justify it by, you know, explaining to people theories of knowledge and, and a little bit about Maddox. So, but I got, I got a guy out there, uh, Mr. Sirius, uh, John Richardson, uh, he he denies x equals x. Now he doesn't say it's false, but he won't. He he just won't believe that it's true. I mean, he does. He's one of the people like I don't really believe anything because that's all faith based. And oh, and he says it doesn't represent reality. I'm like, the law of identity doesn't represent reality. Where in reality does the law of identity cease to exist? That's one of the strangest things I've ever heard. And then he gives a really dumb example, like well. You know, you have, an, you have an orange, and over time, the orange decays and becomes a non-orange. Well, yeah, but what the hell does that do with the law of identity? The yeah, orange, it's, it's so it's bad. A, it's so bad. It's a matter of not understanding. And that is actually something that I find, all, like, a lot when I'm watching things. Like, I was watching a video somebody was doing um, about some, I can't remember what it was, some homophobic uh, preacher guy. And he was talking about Eva... Um, what was it fossils or something and mm -hmm. he just does not understand the field like mm -hmm. at all and it's not like he was trying to debunk it but it was just it just like it wasn't that he he knew what he was talking about at all he just had no idea what he was talking about and i think that's what Shocking. it is when it comes to the law of identity it's not that he didn't believe it because he felt like he had some kind of refutation for it. Mm -hmm. Like that wasn't it. He just had no idea what you were talking about. And so he was trying to explain it. Uh, or no, what he thought it was didn't sound right to him because he understood it improperly. And that might be the case. But, yeah, that could be huge conceptual errors. But when you're epistemically limited and not open-minded to revision, you're never going to correct those errors. Like the like the the, the admin that blocked me the other day and removed him from the atheist group. Um, he's never going to fix his falsities, right? Because he's limited himself to an echo chamber of idiots. And then yet he called me an idiot. And I'm like, I'm not the one that got basic math wrong. Um, hmm. Chris says, good morning. If I had known you were doing this, I would have to add a chat with you. You're more than welcome to. It's the links in the video description. Um, and you can call or you can call in, but you can join the meets up above. It's pinned. She just did the whole S Christmas Saturnalia thing. Yeah, I, I saw some of that. Also, she has an interesting history with Atheist Alliance International. Um, I've heard bits and pieces of that. Um, yeah, Chris, if you got some deets on that, that's fine. Come on in. 
Um, but uh, yeah, the whole Saturnalia thing has already been explained to her a million times. But that's another thing she trolls. Every Christmas, she trolls atheists on that. Uh, and I don't even, you know, like I said, I don't even know who this guy was that she's been referring to because she's he's like, what kind of atheists are we talking about here? They're not a theist type where any uh, kind of theism was just not brought up. But surprisingly, there are other stuff you can talk to your kids about or the no gods exist type, which is taught where it's taught that, you know, no gods exist. Um, so, so I, I said, I really have to ask Courtney, and I'm being sincere here. I really do want to know. Why have you devo d devolved into trolling on Twitter, espousing things I, I tend to believe you know is wrong? Is it for attention? Is it for ego? Misinformation is misinformation, and you're no better than, a flat, er than flat earthers lying to people when you troll. And I mean that. I don't see a difference. You know? And then people are correcting her, you know? And, and that's, that's what I'm saying. The people that are commenting are the ones that are actually correcting her. Oh, wait, this guy, did this guy unblock me? Wait, let me see here. Oh, no, he, I'm blocked. Yeah, see? See that? See that? I said, I said, how is this incorrect? Uh, show us how it's incorrect in even a single way, right? And this is what he did. Coward. Yeah, utterly incorrect in every way. I mean, that is a very bold claim to make. Because... I just asked him for one. I didn't, I didn't ask him for to, to like point out all the errors. I just said, give me one thing that was incorrect in that. Fractally incorrect is a, it's a huge claim to make on anything. But backing it up would take like a book and almost any statement made. But isn't but it? If, isn't it you're supposed to, um, again, if you make a claim, provide evidence? I mean, isn't that the fundamental rule of skepticism online nowadays? Which, again, I, mean, I, don't, have, I don't agree with that, but that's, another, that's a whole different ballgame about when it comes to different types of burden of proof. But, I mean, if here's a guy that's in the atheist community making a claim, and somebody dare ask him for evidence of that claim or to demonstrate it, and he gets blocked? If... If I were to sit, tell somebody they were fractally incorrect, I would be excited to back it up. I love people. I love showing people when they're fractally incorrect. I'm like, let me show you why. You know, right? But he's like, you're utterly incorrect in every way, and now I'm gonna run away. So this guy, I completely agree with you, but arguing this point is akin to banging one's head against the wall. I had the same discussion on another one of your tweets and just deleted the reply for my own sanity. Well. Maybe if you got educated, you wouldn't have that problem running to people trying to correct you on this type of misinformation because Godless Mom is trolling you, Quill. Literally trolling you. Um, and then, of course, uh, like, for example, Star Wars Nerd, he, he gives all this. And by the way, you know where this came from? I'll give you a guess. Where, 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 did the, where did this image come from? Oh, his image? Yeah. Uh, um, oh, God, I have no idea. It came from the wiki that I created, the fandom wiki, uh -oh. from the Great Debate community. This is, from, this is from me, which is fine. I mean, that's what it was for. The wiki is no longer around. I have, the, I have downloaded somewhere, but I mean, yeah. So he's, you know, he, I, I compiled all this stuff, you know? Um, and then she says something like um, Gnostic atheism. Now, here's the problem. Gnosticism has nothing to do with Gnostic. I mean, it literally, it, it was an old sect of Christianity, as Darth points out. Right? It even says not to be confused with, agnostic, not to be confused with Gnosticism. The, the, the root N-G-O-N-S, Gnos, Thomas Henry Huxley used in order to try to, to denote, or connote, sorry, connote, uh, the illusion of having knowledge. He felt that atheists and theists were both messed up. He thought they were both wrong. And so he felt that they had made claims to things that they were not uh, justified to make claims. So they had the illusion of having knowledge that they didn't have. But Gnostic atheist isn't nonsensical, though. It would be somebody, if you use it that way, that not only believes there are no gods, but also makes it as a knowledge claim. But see, do you guys see the contradiction she has already? She's already said the claim that God does not exist is a knowledge claim. But that's atheism. The claim that God does not exist, as Oppie demonstrated, that's just the atheist claim there's no gods. That's a belief claim. Now she says, no, no, no. That would be Gnostic atheism. This 
I, I'm trying to explain to the chat if there's anybody out there who doesn't understand the importance of this. Um, like she just wrote Gnostic atheism as if like, there was some kind of like, um, like uh, what do you call it? Like a textbook term. Um, we like, we got to make sure that we know where these terms come from. And um, they're made up. When, right. When we go back and we look for these terms, like back in acad uh, academia, uh, we find that uh, that her her claim to these terms have no weight, and some people will say st some, something to the effect of, "Oh, well, who cares how we use terms back in the past? We, we it only matters how we use them now." Well, I mean that's all well and great and good and super fine, fun, wowie, but then you can't pretend like they hold any kind of academic weight today because. You can't use them and and like and and anchor them to academia like in the past. Like it doesn't like you can't do that. Right. Like when she uses Gnostic atheism as if it's some kind of academic term, that's 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 a scam artist level crap. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. She's trolling because this guy had asked. Some atheists make the claim there are no gods, but that's not atheism. The one is the correct term for the claim there are no gods exists. Gnostic atheism. Find me one educated person that agrees with that, Courtney. You're full on trolling because that makes no sense. Because what would be then somebody who knows there are no gods? I mean, she's using the claim that there's no gods to be knowledge. Let me ask every atheist out there that's watching. Most of you who are out there are atheists who will happily say there are no gods. Most, most of the people that follow me who are atheists believe there are no gods. Do you guys make that as knowledge claims? Very rarely do I, I find that, right? So she's just literally lying to people, I think. It, it just makes no sense to say that the claim that God does not exist is somehow Gnostic atheism. Because then how would she use agnostic atheism, which again is, is nonsensical or super, superfluous, but it just makes no sense what she's saying. And then let's see here. Uh, this guy says, you know how irritating it is when a theist tells you what you believe and why? I believe there are no gods is not a knowledge claim. That's correct. I know there are no gods. Could it be depending on how no is used? Well, well, that's still a knowledge claim. I don't know how that wouldn't be, but... Uh, this Leo says, belief that God does not exist is not a knowledge claim. It is a proposition. Propositions are not knowledge claims. Unless you say, I know, then you have KP rather than BP. Yes. So you notice that it's just to get a rise of the people that she knows are going to correct her, but she doesn't care. I mean, to be perfectly honest, she's really making a good uh, like reference guide to how this is like how this is actually should be perceived. As long as you just like edit her out, then you can get all the right information. No, that's true, and and that and that's fine because people are educating other people, um, and so she's getting at least the discussion out there. But is it doing? more harm than good. Now, I don't think she really influences anybody. She's not a person anybody goes, oh, I'm going to cite Godless Mom. That doesn't happen, right? People don't going to go, oh, I want to have a philosophical discussion about atheism. Let's invite Godless Mom. No. You know, she's a mommy blogger. She's she's of no consequence to anybody wanting to have in-depth conversations about epistemology or philosophy. Uh, the, Sean, the atheist says, and atheism and atheism are not the same thing. Yes, they're not the same thing. Um... Let's see here. Correct people correcting her more and more. Atheism is not a belief position; it's a probability position. What? What is that? What? See, but you you notice they never produce any evidence for this stuff. You don't people you don't see people citing papers very often, and when they do, it's so cherry picked, out of context, or it's an opinion piece rather than something of, of a more. Um, uh, Academic standard, all right? I mean, Flew's, Flew's paper in 1972, The Presumption of Atheism, was an opinion piece. He even said, look, I know atheism is normally, you know, the belief that God does not exist, but I want, I want it to be fine in the negative. Here's my argument for why I want that. Okay, he's allowed to do that. But the, all the papers out there that actually talk about this particular topic do not use that term that way. So when he says atheism is not a belief position, it's a probability position, well... Aren't all beliefs based upon some kind of probability? What's wrong with my lighting? Well, get, get, just turn the blinds a little bit real quick. I, I, watch, watch this magic. My, my remote control. Remote control. Yeah. Go blinds the other way. Watch magic. 
Magic. Go blinds the other way. Oh, look at that. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? No, it's worse. More blinds that way. Watch the blinds. I'm magically moving the blinds. More. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Yes. Good blinds. See, I have just demonstrated that I have mastery over the nature of, of supernatural. Yes, I can move things with my mind. Now, switch yourself out for the Catgirl V-Tube. What, what's that? I'll, I'll show you later, and then you'll never go back. Yeah. It'll be just a, a Catgirl avatar, 3D anime avatar. Do, do you want to say hi? Yes, you do. Yeah, get over here. Get over here. Take off the mask. Take it off. This is which Cheshire, look who I got. Look who I got here. You gotta look at the camera. Good grief. Anybody know who this is? I know Cheshire does. She's my mod. <laughs> and my new roommate. That I've known for 13 years. But uh, anyways. Uh, okay, so where are we at here? Uh, uh, just catching up on the uh, outside chat. Okay, so so... Yeah, how is it not a probability position? Look, if you're 100% sure there are no gods, do you believe there's a god? No, of course you don't. Right? So I don't know what they even mean by that. Well, I think that they're trying to kind of um, overwrite the uh, academia um, because I think that's, I guess, the ACA's. Um, like, I guess that that's what they want to do. By trying to make it some kind of weird graph thing where you got knowledge one way and belief the other way and you can fall on different points on this graph because graphs are fun graphs are fun can, yeah when they're when, when they make graphs. sense i had a guy i had a guy the other day in one of the facebook groups tells me how messed up my ven was right me and landon were idiots and our ven diagram was all messed up so he gave me one of his ven diagrams and i'm like Dude, did you not sp spot some obvious errors in your Venn diagram? And he wrote back, and he's like, okay, well, I may have messed it up a little bit, but, you know, whatever, yours is still wrong. I'm like, but you didn't demonstrate mine to be wrong. You gave me a Venn that you jacked up that is completely nonsensical. You got the terms wrong. You under misunderstood how a Venn diagram even works, and you're critiquing my Venn diagram. Look. Your Venn diagram didn't give him the answers he wanted about how he feels about himself. It can't be right. Yes, yes, that is that is Cano. That is Cano. Yes, I told you. I, I told you I know her, but I moved back to my hometown. I, I went out the other night. First night, first night I've been to that the bar that I went through for years in a very very long time. I've, I've been there like twice over the last eight years. First night I'm out there, but uh, I had a great time. Met a really 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 cute Latina girl, um, and we went out and had. Fun and, and it was a really it, it was a nice time. I had a nice time. Uh, it, it really kind of made my night. First night I'd been back. <laughs> I meet a girl at a bar, <laughs> a pretty one too. <laughs> Anyways, though, I'm just I'm just bragging a little bit because I I needed that. Um, I'm not jealous, not at all. Maybe she got a sister. Or well, brother, give me your number or cousin. <laughs> uh, Let's see here. This guy says, you're only partly right. Knowledge and belief on a claim always coexist, depending on the definition God might be able to truthfully state. I know God does not exist. Well, how do they coexist? I mean, I mean, granted, knowledge is a subset of belief, but you can have belief without knowledge. You just can't have knowledge without belief. Oh, sorry, uh, Intrigued Feline. Did I miss a question? What, what did Intrigued Feline ask? My apologies. Uh, I'm scrolling up here. She says, do you think I should write out my argument that nobody can consider it to be knowledge since the true value of JTP is indeterminable as of yet? Well, uh, no, because I think when we're, look, there's reasons why I think we could make claims to knowledge, right? Now, a, 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 an actual skeptic, and we're not talking about the, what they consider to be skeptics online. We're talking about a skeptic who says there is no such thing as knowledge, right? The academic, the academic skeptic that says knowledge is unattainable, unobtainable, and the Peronium skeptic that says, well, look, we don't even know if knowledge is obtainable or not. We don't, we don't even know we don't know. But I think there's a reason to say, look, we, we can at least claim knowledge to a certain degree. Now, I don't think we have to have certainty. There's what's called the 
weak acceptance case condition for knowledge, which means that to have knowledge does not require certainty. The strong acceptance case, the strong, strong acceptance case does require certainty, but I assure that I don't think that that's a, a really, a, a, a really a, a fundamental way to go about talking about knowledge. So yeah, I don't think we have to demonstrate something to be true, to have knowledge, right? We might have, we might just not be aware that it's knowledge and we may not be able to demonstrate it's true, but that doesn't mean it's not true. That doesn't mean it's not knowledge, right? I mean, if we're just, if it's true, if it is happened to be is true, we believe it and we can make a good case to justify it, I'm okay with calling that knowledge, right? Now, there are some issues with that when it comes to what's called epistemic luck. Uh, and there is what's called JTT plus, where you add in these other conditions where you try to mitigate the, the um, those situations that dealing with the Gideon cases, but yeah, I'm okay with calling it knowledge, even if we can't verify. Do yeah. you mean that by like epistis, epistemic luck that like you kind of surmise what should be the case and it kind of happens or, no, or happens to be the case? It is, it, yeah, it's just dumb luck that you and we're, weren't really justified. Like, you know, Gideon case would be like the broken clock, right? The clock's broken at six o'clock in the morning. You get up to go to work, you know, knowing that you have to be at work at at at, at uh, you know seven o'clock. So you arrive at the at your work, and it happens to be seven o'clock, you know, and you're like, yeah, I knew I had to be, you know, I, I knew it was seven when I arrived, or I knew it was six o'clock when I got up, but you didn't know it because the clock was broken. It just happened to be correct, but you didn't know it because it was just happened to be luck that the clock happened to to break at the exact time that you you know, thought it was. So there's always, there's always some type of epistemic luck in any belief first theory. Uh, Dr. Uh, Linda Zabowski had made a brilliant paper on, on that to, to pr pretty much demonstrate that any belief first uh, theory will have epistemic luck issues, giddy air cases, but whatever. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not a good theory. It's still the best out there, I think, or at least JTP plus, but She's like, no, I'm not disputing it could be knowledge, but that is that it cannot be claimed to be knowledge without determining that it also true. I don't think so. I don't think you have to determine it's true or not. It's still knowledge if you can justify it. I mean, I mean, maybe, I maybe mean, in the undeterminable case. I mean, look, we obviously know that in certain Turing complete logical systems, there are going to be proof. There are going to be truths out there that cannot be proven. Right? Griddle pointed that out in one of his incompleteness theorems. Now we can't say we know those things, right? Those those truths we can never know because they're not provable. Uh, we we cannot demonstrate that they're true. We don't know if they're true or not. We assume they're true, but that wouldn't be considered knowledge then for those types of truths. I would. I, I'm just spitballing there, but maybe. Um, and then let's see here. What else we got on here? Like this one. Look at this guy. You cannot prove a negative. Yes, you can. It's called proof by impossibility. This, this is what I'm saying. This is the level, this is the quality level of atheists that are responding to people like Godless Mom. They're not well, very well educated, at least not this particular topic, right? Because we all know you can prove a negative. Um, atheism by definition. Whenever I hear that, see that phrase by definition, I automatically assume the person I'm talking to doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. By the way, rejection means to believe the, the negation. So atheism, by he's actually saying to somebody who actually reads about these things, atheism by definition implies a belief that the proposition is false. But that's not how he means it because he's so ambiguous in his language. Yeah, but does, yeah, I think he's still disagreeing with her, but I, yeah, he's still using that atheism by definition, like kind of. Right. It can only be one thing. You want me to screen share in here? Would that be easier for you, by the way? Um, maybe. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not lagging that much. I'm only lagging by like about five seconds oh, in okay. the stream. So. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to join us? By the way, like I said, it is, um, it is an open hangout. Uh, yeah, most Tolans can prove a negative too. I mean, I don't know what he means, but you can't prove a negative. Now, generally speaking, it's very difficult to prove an existential negative, that things don't exist for the most part, unless they're a logical contradiction. I, we can prove square circles don't exist. Why? Because they're a logical contradiction. But can I prove that, you know, my rock star doesn't exist? I doubt it. 
I doubt it. I don't think we can prove existential things of that nature. Okay? And philosophers that I've read generally note that. And so what they mean is that there's probably no way to, to prove God does not exist. And I get that, right? That's why science doesn't prove anything. But to say that's a rejection of belief makes no sense because uh, it's the rejection that the proposition is true, which means you're asserting it as false. Rejectionism in Fred Geach, the approach, Fred Geach has a, a system of, called rejectionism that it's not just non-acceptance. So when you say in philosophy, I reject that, it's not merely I'm saying I don't accept your premise, it's saying I believe your premise is false. Because all premises are asserted as true in a syllogism. If you, if you have no reason not to accept the premise, you're, you're kind of rashly committed to accept them, unless you can show, look, I think it's false, let me show you why. You know, I don't think this is a true premise. So. Uh, a Nikki! Nikki? I'm here, I'm here. Hi. I got, I got something that'll make this all really, really, really simple. Stop making it fucking complicated. Either you believe or you don't. Well, no. well, yeah, but that we all we all we we, we all know that. I mean, it's just, but but that well, the point she made before is that oh yeah, all non-believers don't believe. Uh, yeah, well, all theists don't believe either. They just don't believe that God doesn't exist. It's the same coin. It's the same two sides of the same coin. All and for every belief, you have a non-belief condition. I yes. believe I believe the sky is blue means I don't believe it's not blue. I believe that God exists means you don't believe that God does not exist. I believe that God does not exist means that you do not believe God does exist. Every belief has a non-belief component to it. I don't know any exactly. how, how you wouldn't. So, yeah, either you believe God doesn't exist or you don't believe that God does not exist. And that's, by the way, that is not a double negation, which, again, on these atheist things on Facebook page, they always say, well, Steve, that's a double negation. I'm like, no, it's not. And then I try to explain to them why it's not a double negation. But they say, I'm wrong. Okay, well, demonstrate it. That's one of the reasons why Arn Ra blocked me is because he had said that I had double negation. I'm like, okay, prove to me in logic or show me in logic how that's a double negation. And he blocked me. I was like, well, excuse me. What I said to him was, if you can't show it, you don't know it, Arn. You know, when you paused before you said blocked, I was thinking the next word you're going to say is block. Like I was, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, when you, when, I'm, look, when somebody can't argue, out-argue me on the facts, as, as Landon says, look, you can argue about Steve's positions on sub subjective stuff, but if you're going to argue facts, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to lose if you argue facts with me most of the time. Now, can I get facts? Can, can I get some things that I thought were facts or not? Sure. We all make mistakes. But most of the time when I'm, I'm telling people facts, it is something you can go look up for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. like, like, Chris, it is a fact that you're Australian, correct? No, because Australia is a false place that doesn't exist on this planet. <laughs> because, because you're literally from Britain, yes. I, see, I, I'm convinced that all, uh, all Australians are just British with funny accents. Uh, so we, we yeah. just think Americans yeah. are Canadians with funny accents, so that works. You, you don't consider yourself a Brit? No, no, not at all. Do you, do you have the queen on your money? Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. You're a Brit. <laughs> no, no. The queen, the queen is um, the head of the Commonwealth. Whatever, you're um, right. But no, no. We're, we're definitely not British. We hate, we hate, we call them the Poms. Yeah. <laughs> so, so does that mean the Canadian are British too? Yes. 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 <laughs> I told the Cheshire, does, she's a Brit. Just keep the queen <laughs> okay, on her okay, money. Okay, well, hang on. Do, do you, you, but you guys have got Abraham Lincoln on some of your money, correct? Mm -hmm. he, he wasn't a Brit. No, but he was a Republican, so you must be a Republican. I am. Well, I was. I'm a centrist now. <laughs> I don't identify as Republican any longer. I did growing up. I was a Reagan Republican. But I find that both, both spectrums of the, of the political landscape have gotten so far extreme and ridiculous. I, I'm not comfortable with either of them any longer. I just, I'm, oh, a, centr they're, they're, I'm a centrist. They're, they're, all, they're all crazy, but that's, crazy. Uh, that's, that's a topic for over and under, yes. which we'll have to get going soon. Yeah, so what do um, you got for us with the whole AAI thing, Courtney? Because, again, well, do you, first I, I of all, do you agree that she's trolling, that she's just, she's just trolling atheists for the fun of it? Well, I, no, I don't think she's trolling. I think she's just trying to be the wokest atheist of them all. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, woke, it's a woke thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I, and I was going yeah, to put that in it, my video description, I swear. I was going to be like, she's an edge, edgy 
anti theist who wants to do you yeah. know woke atheism. Uh, but I didn't put Look, that in it's, there. It's it's frustrating because I think yeah you know, she she some of the crap she puts out. And look, I, I don't know her. I, I've never never really spoken to her. I, I know of her, um, but some of the crap she puts out, it's frustrating because it, it's just it, it sets sets back the good work that gets done within the atheist community because yes. all it is, it's fighting over definitions. It, it's it's trying to be the wokest of them all, and, and people who are coming out of religion see that, and what they see is they see, oh, sh- this is what my pastors actually warned me about. Shit, the church was right. Yeah. And that's why, you know, and, it's, it's funny you mention that, Chris, because people ask me why this is such a, a, a sticky subject with me. Why did I go on it so much? And it's exactly what you said. There are a lot of good religious organizations, or excuse me, uh, atheist organizations out there that I think do really well. And I think they have a, they have a purpose. Um, I even support things that the Satanic Temple does, right? But when you see people like Courtney doing the same bullshit that you see fundamentalists do, then you will have atheists that eventually will learn these stuff properly and go, hey, I was lied to by the church. Now I'm lied to by other atheists. And I don't want to have anything to do with either one of them. That's the majority yeah. of my audience. They're in that situation. Yeah. And so, yes, I, this is why I harp on it all the time. And I will always continue to harp on it because it's such an important thing. Because if you can't get that basics down and you cannot see somebody lying and trolling like Courtney, then you've lost all objectivity. You've lost your ability to critically think, and you're just following the same mindset as you would from some religious fundy. fundy. And, and, and look, you, I can understand that you know, the average person on Twitter, I mean, look, people put dumb stuff on Twitter all the time, and, and I don't think you can hold everyone to a high standard. With, with Courtney, though, she puts herself out there as an atheist leader. Now, yes. um, I, I'm not too sure how much I'm, because there was things that was told that were told to me in confidence and a lot of stuff that's, that's come out. So if I sound a little bit vague on things, I don't mean to. I can tell you off okay, that's air. Fine. But um, basically her and a, another person uh, were appointed the head of AAI. Um, what they did was they then decided to leave AAI uh, and start their own group called IAA. Um, but what they did was they took the entire database. I heard that. They, yeah, was they, that true? They claim, they claim it's yeah. by yeah. Well, I, well, I mean, I, I started getting emails from them. Yeah. yeah. They claim it was by accident and all that, but I mean, I'll, I'll put it this way: it's um, after you know, litigation, all that kind of stuff. That IAA no longer exists. Mm-hmm. Um, now, when, when you'd look at them, you'd look at IAA, and basically IAA was the, the woke, exclusive, left-wing version of the of, of AAI. Now, I don't care what side of the, the political fence people fall on, but when you're running an organisation, uh, and one that is, is really a, a non-politically affiliated organisation, you've got to be right down the middle because you're going to get people from both from a lot of different sides with a lot of different views. And the thing is, you're not there to be an ally to every other cause. Or you're not there to be the, the wokest of them all. Mm-hmm. You're there to serve the function that you're there to mm-hmm. serve. And it's as simple as that. Oh, I agree with you on that. And But I, I heard that they took the database and other things. It's some very unethical things. And again, I don't know the nuances, and I, I'm not going to wait too much into it, but that's, that I have heard before. I, by the way, uh, Jeff, I had to mute you because you had a lot of background noise. Um, yeah. But but what, you know what? Why don't we start our own atheist, agnostic, non-believer organization? Uh, and th- there's a lot of them out there, actually, that I, I, I like the guy from, like the Thomas uh, Shady guy. I like his organization. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, we differ on his page. Um, I did sign up to be a, uh, what are they called? Uh, uh, somebody who's, yeah. I don't remember, the, somebody on the, on the panel to help him out. But with, I mean, with, with, with Thomas's organization, though, he, here's the difference with Thomas's organization. Thomas's organization is specifically a political organization. Yeah. They go to things like CPAC. That's, that's their, their mission is to basically be an atheist voice within the conservative community. And I'm okay with that's that. Why, they're, they're not, they're not, Portraying themselves as the global atheist organization, yeah, you know, that is there for the rights of of atheists. Now, if you want to have, you know, the a left wing atheist organization, absolutely, go set one up. Just be clear about what it is and what your goals are. Um, don't put yourself out there as a, an overreaching, over, you know, all embracing atheist organization because all that happens is you turn a lot of people off. And people coming in, and look, you've got to remember, a lot of people who have been, especially in fundamental religion, 
they they tend to probably have a more conservative viewpoint. And that's even as they're coming out. You don't suddenly wake up, become an atheist, and and all your beliefs and views on everything change. It's a gradual process. Mm-hmm. And they'll see things like um, what was this IAA and, and the stuff that Courtney puts out there, and it's a straightaway turnoff. It's a straightaway, hang on, yes, mm-hmm. everything I was told in the church about what these atheists do and believe is correct. It's frustrating because there's so many of us who put so much hard work into, and and not always publicly. Like I know a lot of people who do a lot of things behind the scenes and don't want any credit for it, but to help people come out of religion, but to help you know, people mm-hmm. through that process, to help people understand what it is that atheists actually believe. And then you've got just these these clowns who put all this garbage out there. And you know what it is? It's It's, it's, it's an ego thing. It's all because they want to get the most, you know, likes on their post and and you know all that kind of stuff and and have people tell them how right they are. Oh yes, oh oh yeah, you slay it, queen, all that kind of crap. Yeah, it's, um, of course it's ego. It's, it's, it's absolutely ego. ego. And, and, and look, it's that that's that's a natural thing because it's they've actually there's studies that have shown that when people get a lot of likes on a social media post, it's a dopamine hit, similar to when you have a win on a on a slot machine or something like that. It, it's it's yeah, you you get a dopamine hit from it. But I just think what's going on overall. Look, she. I'm. I'm a big free speech kind of person. She's got the right to say whatever she wants, even if she is wrong. Yeah, it was um, like that. Even if she's the most offensive person out there. Um, I have a right to critique her on my own leash. You know what? That, that's troll. exactly right. We've. We. We also have the right to say, "Hey, this is bullshit," and I don't like what you're doing. Because I mean, like I said, she's not she's not helping atheism. She's not changing anybody's mind. She's preaching to the choir. Do you know people? I, I guarantee you, I would be willing to, to to put actual money on this that I have converted more people to atheism than she has, and I'm not an atheist. I reckon, I reckon she's probably led more people to Christianity than um, than atheism with the, the way she carries on. I mean, I mean she's, not she's, wrong on she, she's got yeah. she's got a bit of a she's got a bit of a simp army, and and that's no critique of her, but she does have some. Some men who, um, oh, yeah, I, no, I, I, I have them come after me, and, and it's not just yeah. her. There's other people on Twitter that, um, that have large simp armies, like one's called Pink Heretic, yeah. um, I think her name was, and there's a couple of other ones that just are like the dumbest of the dumb, but they'll simp for them just because they think they're going to get something from them or something. I have yeah. no and, idea, and, and but it's just no bizarre. Critique. That's no critique of her. I mean, you no, know, it's, it's not her. I don't, I'm not blaming you know, her for that. They're, that's but, but it, it's you know, it's people will. <laughs> And it's not, it's, my not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not only because I also want to be careful because it's not not just a um, it's not just a you know a, 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 because she's a female you, you'll get people who will do the same thing for the R and Ras and the Matt Dillahunters yeah, you know, anything they say nothing is wrong it is absolutely correct she, and and I mean we'll look at the crap I, I had to endure with bloody Jimmy Snow I mean you know it's a, an area that I'm an expert in the field of um, but he read, but he rushing. read but he read something on it once. Well, look, it was two Guardian articles. Yeah, he, so, he read I a mean, Guardian that, article. He was an expert. Come on, that 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 clearly trumps my um yeah my my university Chris, study and, and actual work in the field and Chris the I understanding had, I, of I literally things. had a guy the other day said, why didn't you call any, the why didn't you call any the expert oh, so why didn't you call the atheist experience and talk to Matt Dillahunty he knows all about all this stuff he would probably wreck you and I'm like oh mother I was like dude <laughs> come on <laughs> yeah I was like really You're, really. Um, no, yeah, look, that's it, not it, happening. Being, but being really, the host that, of a popular YouTube channel or show does not make you an expert on things. That just I means that you are you are particularly good at getting people to watch your stuff and entertaining. Matt is a really it's good. Cool. He's a really good redditician. He's a really good polemicist. He's really good at what he does. But when it comes mm. to the actual um, study of atheism, he's 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 very poor. I mean, he's not as bad as Arn. Arn's Steve, way Steve, worse. But Steve, you forgot one other thing. He's really good at hanging up on people. Well, yeah, because again, when you when you get to that kind of polemics and you get to kind of a position where you cannot actually articulate why an argument is wrong properly, then it's your only recourse for him is to somebody like them is to block or hang up. That's in fact when he blocked me, he actually lied about why he blocked me. I mean, well, sort of. I'm not gonna say he lied. It was a partial truth. Um, what happened did happen. But not in the way that he said happened. He took what I said and took it completely out of context, and it, and and actually took. So I even put it in my in my my what I said on Facebook to avoid it being taken out of context. I'm like I'm gonna make sure people realize this is not what I'm saying, 
And then he's, he ran with it saying, oh, well, Steve says this. I'm like, no. Uh, Kawasa 10,001. Big Kawasa says, does. Does this mean Christmas is not pagan? <laughs> yeah, that was, a, again, Puritan thing. It goes back to the Puritans where they're trying to, to, to um, eliminate Christmas a little bit, and they wanted to make it into people believing it, a pure, it had uh, pagan roots. But when you go and investigate any of this stuff, Nothing I found indicates from any academic source that Christian had I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the, I'll tell you, uh, let me, uh, uh, very briefly, let me cover this because I am, I'm yes. a historian. This is, this is what I do. Okay. People, there's two things. The first thing is that saying that Christmas is pagan pushes a Eurocentric point of view, thinking that Europe is the only place that Christianity exists, which is mm-hmm. not the case. The, the mm-hmm. first, the first Christians outside of um, Israel were, uh, actually Armenian, so you know it's then they they have all their customs and traditions. What you what you've got to understand is it's not taking pagan elements; it's cultural elements, and you'll see this throughout the world. So a, a group or a culture will convert to Christianity. They don't just suddenly drop all their ceremonies, their practices, and their traditions. They incorporate their own stuff into there. Exactly. Yeah. And that, yeah. they're not pagan traditions. Mm-hmm. They're cultural traditions. A great example is the, um, I can't think of what the Spanish name is, but um, the, the Mexican um, celebration of the Day of the Dead. Uh, Muerte um, de Dia. The Dia de, 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 de Muerte. Yeah. Now, now, that's that's done um, very much as, you know, there's, there's religious elements tied into it. No, uh, but realistically, it's got absolutely nothing to do with religion mm-hmm. at all it's a cultural tradition now they haven't stolen that from from another religion that's just that's just something that culturally has has carried over with them now if i can now i can well i won't say converted but i became an atheist i still celebrate christmas i still have time off for easter now that doesn't mean that atheists have co-opted christmas and easter that just means it's a cultural tradition that i've grown up with you know is celebrated in my in my country means different things to different people and i still choose to to observe that now i don't go to church and talk about the baby jesus but um santa claus certainly does visit my children mm-hmm. yeah no and i and look if somebody even said hey if somebody's an atheist can they celebrate christmas i somebody asked me that i'm like yeah why wouldn't they i i, I don't have a problem with that uh kimamaki i think you're talking about tommy lauren by the way political blonde <laughs> i was i was thinking kelly mcanoney i was thinking i was thinking tommy lauren See, this is exactly what I was going to come in and say, but I'm glad Chris is here because um, he can talk about history way better than I can. Yeah. But it's kind of I, his thing. Uh, <laughs> it's kind, it's of, kind of his thing. It's kind of his thing, and he's, he's certainly someone I defer to on the historical matters on a number of occasions. But I seem to recall she put that whole thing out there that it's, that it's a trope every year that you know Christians, um, you know, mm-hmm. stole christmas and the pagans and there was a there was a phd who studied uh, early christianity who did a whole big thread i read um, that that was gore- the, oh, the, that the, the, with, that, with the, peer-reviewed the, articles the 12 day, the 12 misconception the 12 days of misconceptions of eighth of, uh, of christmas or something wasn't it, mm, it yeah i uh, yeah i can't it was the thing it was a long long right. thread which with citations put in it with citations and you got the you got the whole with, with uh, Courtney saying, "Oh, I'll take a look," which she clearly never did because she just <laughs> out there repeating Dude, the same. Cor- Courtney had five citations. One link didn't work. Yeah, two links were from the turn of the century, the twentieth century, not the twenty first, but <laughs> the twentieth century. It was like from eighteen ninety something and nineteen oh three or something. Some ter- so a little ad- antiquated. Um, and the other two were not even from any kind of peer review sources or from some, one was a review of, of a book. Um, and it's like, this is your scholarly research. This is your scholarly citation. That's what I'm saying. She had to know she was trolling. No, no. See, see the thing is it's, it's, it's lazy atheism. It's look, she's clearly someone who doesn't have any academic backing in, in the field. And if she does, my goodness. Um, but no, no, she has no education. It, it, it's yeah, just, it's, it's, oh. it's some people just can't say, you know what, maybe I'm wrong. I'm happy to change my mind. Now, you know, I used to hold the, before I actually studied history, I used to hold the view that um, you know, Christmas had pagan origins just because I'd never looked into it and that's mm-hmm. what I'd heard so, so often. But as soon as I looked into it, I went, oh, okay, no, I'm wrong. I, even even my, my view on what atheism was, mm-hmm. I used to hold a different view. I used to be, I guess, a laxist. 
And then, yeah, a couple of conversations with you. You showed me, I guess, philosophy, which is something, once again, I don't really have a great understanding of. And it's just like, well, you know what? Okay, cool. I, I, I think I was wrong. I changed my view. There's nothing wrong with saying I was wrong. She has no, she has no need, she, but she has no reason, I, I think, in her mind's eyes, she has no reason to change anything. She has the popularity. She has the the, the simps simping for her. She gets a thousand likes on her on a, on a silly tweet. You look, it, it's weird because I'll I'll say something that I think is pretty intelligent or maybe even profound occasionally. But this is something worthy, I think, of, of discourse. I get like six likes. But somebody like Courtney will just say like something absolutely stupid, like you know, atheism is only one thing, it's, you know, lack of belief, and she'll get like ten thousand fucking likes. It's like. It's the same thing with like some of the other popular Twitter people. They'll say one dumb thing, you know. They'll be like, "Yo, I got a cat today." Billion views. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't. Um, I, I mean, look, it's Twitter in particular is is a cess. Probably Facebook's a worse cesspool. Facebook's worse than Twitter wise. now. Oh, Facebook, Facebook atheists yeah. are the dumbest atheists on the entire planet, without question. I I will uh, not go it, into the atheist Facebook groups now because they are just. It's just the most. It's all just ridiculous memes. Most of those groups now, and they're, they're just bad memes. Um, That's all and I I've got. seen that on. Tw I mean, I saw that on Twitter as well. There's, an, there's another person who posts bad atheist memes on a regular basis. I actually felt the need to call out because it was what the uh, the, the atheist argument bad atheist thing that I hear that really winds me up more than anything else is the whole religion is a mental illness mm -hmm. thing. And that sort of come, seems to come out a every lot, so often a lot from of people groups, who really should know better as well than to be posting stuff like that. Jeff, a lot of groups that are, are now putting that in the rules do not say that religion is a mental illness or you'll be kicked out. And there's reasons for that because, look, some of us are ex-theists. I was an ex-theist. I didn't have a mental illness because I believe in God. It's just a, I believe it to be a you know a, a belief that was not justified properly, right? Um, doesn't mean that I believe there's no God. It's, it's just of, it's part of the it evolutionary process. Yeah. If 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 we didn't have belief in or the ability to tell stories or make up stories, things like that, or the, or the belief in things like this, we wouldn't have evolved to the point we were. We'd just be apes right. arguing with each other and fighting over territory. I mean, we're, now we're apes who can agree with each other while we fight over territory. But um, it, it is actually, it's and, and anthropology isn't my greatest area of expertise, but absolutely the, the belief in deities and, and religion is a part of our evolutionary process. It's not a mental illness. But, but I can tell you, and I'll, I'll I agree. Go on a second, but if there was ever going to be one thing that will make me reconvert to Christianity, it's not a belief in a God. Um, it's just because I'm sick of, Facebook atheists and, and the crap because every time I, I see them and I'm around them, you know, it just makes yeah, me. Yeah, I, I, I get, I get the reasoning for that, but it's yeah. just, you know, I, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a really bad, a, right? I'm, I'm I, you're, 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 yeah, I know you're taking a piss. I, I, I take a piss. I get it, and I get it. Um, but, you know, like you, you as somebody who was, you know, a pastor, you know, you were religious. That, mm. that nobody, it, it, nobody would be like, oh, well, atheist pastor was, you know, had a mental illness and delusional. It's just, no, he, that was his belief system. And no, his, no, it, yeah. I, I can assure you, I didn't suddenly, you know, gain a, a ton of IQ points the day that I sort of made the decision that I wasn't religious anymore yeah. or, or, you know, stopped believing. Yeah. You know, it's not really made the decision. It's, you know, I think if I had a choice, I probably would have chosen to stay. But, um, you know, it, it's... And no, it's, 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 it's ego. It's this whole, oh, I'm an atheist, so I must be smart. Edgy, than what edgy I'm atheist. Than. I mean, I mean, really, they're just a bunch of wankers. Yeah, no, you're right. It's not. It's not. It's not all atheists on Facebook. I'm just saying that you'll find some of the no, dumbest but, but atheists. You have, you have in, all in, through in these group. groups, and, and I mean, the, the, the groups are either full of bad takes. Um, stupid memes. I, I mean, look, occasionally you get some funny memes. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I have grabbed uh, a few. That's fine. I get that as well. Friday, Friday I get that. Six yeah. pack before. Yeah. And, and for some reason, there's a lot of Nigerians at the moment who are try, who are basically posting about, you know, you're all going to hell and trying to reconvert everyone. That's, that seems to be – I've left all the um, – atheist facebook groups because it's just it's just it i mean out. i've been very i mean i'm not that i mean i'm in very few because i've been kicked uh, out of most but whatever i just go there yeah. you know what i do is and i've told people this people are like oh steve goes in these facebook groups to troll no i've been very clear what i use facebook groups for and twitter i test my arguments 
I have an argument. I want to test it. See if you can poke holes in it. Correct, you know, fix things. Because I've had arguments I've thrown out there and go, you're right, this is not a great argument. You know, either I'll try to, to, to shore it up or I'll just scrap it. I've had arguments I've scrapped. Yep. Why? Because yeah, they exactly. weren't great, but I wanted to test them. That's that's how you build better arguments is you take the steps to say, look, I have an argument. Let's see if I can test it. Let's see if there's some problems with it. If you, it's hit or miss, right. right? You don't hit a home run every time. I only have two arguments that I think are home runs, my WASP and my atheist semantic collapse argument, which I'm trying to have published. These are, to me, I, I cannot say that they're unassailable, but they certainly have not been assailed by anybody yet, up any stress of yeah. imagination. And you have the atheists out there that won't even properly evaluate it. Every time I get people to try to evaluate it, they make some fundamental misunderstanding about it. I had one, look, it was a true story. I had one guy recently who seemed to have a really decent handle of the logic. He was, I was itemizing what he said. We were going through it. I swear to God this happened. A moderator removed the whole subthread. Mm. Yeah. The, and, yeah that and, and, he, and he said, well, he was just being bogged down with the other stuff. I'm like, dude, here's a guy that I'm going to actually have a conversation with that knew what the hell I was talking about that just blew my argument up by fiat. I think he had, you know, I think he was on the right track, but I could show where I think he made a mistake. But it was the first real valid attempt at trying to assault my WASP argument that I've seen in ages, if maybe even ever. Hmm. And the moderator deleted that subthread. That's that was weird. Yeah, I, th I think people who moderate Facebook pages uh, sometimes think that they the leader of a group and really all they are is just there to make sure that people don't post naked pictures. Pretty much. That's, that, that's basically, that's basically, it doesn't mean that they've, they've got some undying power or knowledge or they're the gatekeepers of, of anything. It's just, well, you're, you're there, you're there to enforce the rules, not to push, but yeah, unfortunately humans are humans. And when it comes to ego and social media and the way that we act, I, I think in, in years to come, there's going to be some really interesting studies about the long-term effects of social media on the brain. Um, <laughs> and I, th I think we really see right? the worst of humanity with it. You ain't kidding, man. Like, here, let me show you my Facebook page. If you, I don't know if you saw this when I posted it. Um, let's see. I got, I'm after I was going to say this. This is the main reason why I stay away from philosophy, religion, and politics. <laughs> I will listen to them. That's not an issue. I stay out of the topic because of stuff like this. <laughs> okay, so like this guy right here, right, on my Facebook page, um, his, name, his name was uh, Craig McNeese. Um, I said, since he removed me, the genius admin in this atheist echo chamber is Craig McNeese, who clearly didn't know the difference between 0.9999 and 0.99 repeating, calling me an idiot. This is why no one should take these idiots seriously. Basic math, they get wrong and then block people who point out their gross misunderstandings. And I say, and it looks like he blocked me now. You should be ashamed to use your admin power to cover your own ineptness. You can block me now, but at least people know to watch out for your abuse of admin power in the group atheism. I, and I was blind. I mean, I was already suspended, so I didn't give a shit. Uh, so I blocked his name out, but he says, I can't begin to tell you how wrong you are that 0. 0.9999 equals one. Not even Lawrence Krauss would agree with you on that. Well, no shit, but was never something that I would have said because 0. 0.9999 is not the same as 0. 0.99 repeating. So what I do did, I asked Lawrence Krauss to weigh in. I said, hey, Lawrence, maybe you could explain to this math whiz Adam of an atheist group, Craig McNeese, the difference between 0. 0.999 and 0. 0.99 repeating as apparently he doesn't know and just silences people by removing them from the groups rather than learning about math properly and sets up a straw man instead. <laughs> and so he, this guy blocked me because this was linked before. So yeah, this is what I'm saying. These people are fucking idiots. They're incompetent. And yet I'm the idiot that, or the, the one, you know, the claiming that I'm an idiot or I know what I'm talking about or I'm trolling when everything I've told them is something that could be go read about. You don't have to fucking know that much about math to go read Wikipedia and, and see that 0.9 over equals one. You don't have to understand the calculus behind it. You don't have to understand limit of sequences or, or summations. But you to say somebody, to, to, to straw man somebody and say, oh, well, I can't begin to tell you how wrong you are the 0.9999 equals one, when clearly that is something that I've never even remotely ever suggested. That is how dishonest these atheists are any longer. I mean, just beyond dishonest. I'm not sure if it's a dishonesty or just ineptitude. Why? They, no, dude, they're not mutually exclusive. Combination I mean, of both. It, it might be.
but the, but he was but he was an admin for the group atheist that had like thirty thousand uh, members, but of course only like six people in there ever talk because it's a total echo chamber. You know? I think yeah. though, uh, after thinking about this, I think I found what this uh, like there's something about this Courtney thing, this whole argument that has always rubbed me the wrong way after. After coming out of that, because uh, I used to be, you know, into this whole ACA thing and lacked the thing, because that's kind of how I came out of my, uh, well, all right, no, I became an atheist way before I realized who the ACA were, mm -hmm. but I eventually I ran into the ACA after kind of not knowing what I was, because I didn't know what um I was after I kind of fell out of religion. I didn't know what there was outside of religion. I was kind of meandering around in a miasma of not knowing what the heck was going on. But uh, that's, a good, that's a good word. Did you get that from a, a straight epistemology? Um, miasma? I, oh, no, I've known about okay. miasma for a long time. It's a good uh, word. It is a good word. Yes. Um, it's, they use it in straight epistemology. I didn't lose that one. Mm, got a fly in here. Okay, go ahead. Um, but, um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I think I found out what I don't like about this. And... It's that it's 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 so insincere the idea that you can use this whole lack of belief in gods as like a self descriptor in a word because how and what other word ever do you use that is the definition lack of something. Like I don't know. Do you... I, I don't honestly. I don't know. That might be, but I'm not aware of any position of philosophy. Uh, they're all assertive positions, right? Um, even solipsism would be the position that you believe that there are no other minds other than yourself, right? It's not a lack of belief. It is a belief that there are no other minds, um, or you know, uh, the external the external world doesn't exist. These are beliefs. I don't know anything that's defined in the negative uh, <laughs> offhand. There might be, right. but if somebody could think of one, let me know. But I I don't know of any offhand. That's defined negatively. And I, I think that shoehorning this in, um, I don't think that this is done. Like, I don't, nobody would do this in any other thing. This is only done in this one thing, mm -hmm. and I don't think it's done in any honest fashion. Well, of I course, think this it's is not done. honest. It's completely dishonest. <laughs> I mean, it's like intellectually as dishonest as you can get. And that's why when Chris was saying earlier, you have people that are leaving religion. And yet, all of a sudden, they're exposed to this type of intellectual dishonesty. Uh, they get, they're like, look, I was lied to before. I'm not going to get into this same trap again. I don't want to be lied to again by atheists. Because the atheist people like Courtney are just as much as dishonest as any fundamental Christian out there that are doing the whole, um, uh, what is it, the um, gospel, gospel uh, prosperity gospel or the Ken Hovind. She's no different. She's just the atheist version of that. Now, who wants who so, wants to be associated with that? Who who, who wants to, to 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 be a member of that kind of organization? No one. So, did you? Yeah, go ahead. Did you see the exchange of this tweet with um exchange with uh, Philip Mueller? Because that's I thought this is really telling. Because he, he points out that first of all everything's wrong, and you know there's, that there's multiple definitions of atheism exist. Yeah, I've I've, I've, I've read his, been, I've read his things know, before. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and it said, and it said look, you don't get. You know, you don't get to dictate what the exclusive meaning of atheism is. Well, and, and that's so, what they—that's what they now, say. I do, and, though, Jeff. They say, "Oh, yeah, Steve says there's only one definition." Has, that's correct. I'm like, no, I've yeah. never argued that. It's never. The whole like, and Philip says, "I did, basically, I says, I dare you to tell me how I'm being prescriptive again." And Courtney's response is, "Any definition of atheism, you know, you know, any other definition of atheism excludes other atheism," and it's the whole like. You've attacked my identif identity <laughs> by sort of saying, to, to suggest that there's more than one way that this can be this, this can be defined. And, well, and they, they, they feel they, like it's some sort of attack on their identity. I think this is a big part of the pro issue with this. And you might be right. Um, you know, six years ago, they wouldn't even come that far. Back six years ago, it was there is only one correct definition of atheism, according to them. That's that's when me and uh, Ozzy and uh dr gary uh, edwards and other people are like uh no that isn't how it actually is and uh you need to stop pushing this narrative because you're making us all look bad this is when you know bionic dance was like oh rocks are atheists and Arn's like oh yeah rocks are atheists <laughs> i'm sorry but if you degraded the word atheist to, to include rocks uh you lost the plot 
you've really lost the reason why we have words to connote certain things when we have these discussions because you've watered it down the term nothing. It's useless. So, so I think is it, see by the same see I, I'm trying to think. I think it may have been Dave for Roll, Rollins who might have said this, but um, if you're going to go with the rock rocks or atheist thing, thing by the same logic, you can argue that vegans um, rocks are vegans by the same logic. Yes, they don't eat meat. Mm -hmm. And it's and. And you, mm -hmm. you, then, you know, you try and pose that back to them by the that logic, rocks are vegans. It, it suddenly comes very obvious how bad that actually is. You know, that it should be obvious at that point that how bad rocks are atheist well, okay. is. Well, let's, let's look well, at well, that. Joke. Everyone, okay. everyone knows that rocks right. rocks are actually theists because they uh, they don't disbelieve in a god. Right. Exactly. Yep. They're they're mm. they're they're they're, oh, yeah. they're, the, they're theists, atheists, agnostics, anything you want them to be. I guess going into some people. Um, so, so maybe yeah. let's let's ask about that vegan thing because I've 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 discussed that before, but it was a very long time. Um, when um, when before you go on, yeah. I wanted to finish my thought. Actually, I'm, I'm really going to quickly just going to say goodbye. So I'll, I'll catch you all later. I, I do have to run. All right, good um, sir. Thank you. I'll I'll be listening. Uh, yeah, because I want I want to get back to that vegan thing. Yeah, Chris. There's a good point to be made on there. I'll I'll probably I'll probably have to jump out in five minutes or so, Steve. So, all right, Mister, finish that thought so I can. Okay, um, but what I want to say is, is that uh, nobody lives their way in the way that they're defining these words. So it's just like in like Christianity, where they ask you to follow all these rules that fit in this like one specific row, but they don't live life in in that way in any other category. Like it's 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 insincerity. It's like that that's. Well, they, not, they're, asking you to, <laughs> they're asking you to live in the same way in this case, in this case, just like how in religion, they're asking you to live. Like it's, it's not different in, in the way I'm seeing it. It's, it's, it's just buzzwords and bullshit. Um, well, cause it's a popularity and, contest. They just want to be noticed and, and virtue signal to be, you know, Hey, look, atheist activist out there and atheist people with channel. Look at me. I'm agreeing with you and I'm virtue signaling with you. That's all it is. It's not good. It's not a good look. It would definitely it would turn me away from atheism, and it makes the people who say that atheism is a religion look very correct. Yep, yep, I agree. So, so you know the whole vegan thing. You know, people can say, well, veganism is you know somebody who doesn't eat meat. Well, no, not necessarily. Uh, that is not that is a, that is a necessary condition, but not a sufficient. This is why we don't define things in the negative, right? If you just say, oh, a vegan a vegan is anything that doesn't eat meat, then yes, rocks are vegan, right? But if you look at like Wikipedia, it actually has a much better um, definition. And again, descriptive. But a veganism is the practice of abstaining the use of animal products, right? It is a practice. So you abstain, which is an action, right? So veganism mm -hmm. is the abstinence of eating meat. It's not just somebody who does not eat meat. Right. You, I, uh, look, if I don't eat meat, but I love I want to eat meat and I love to eat meat, but I can't for whatever reason. Right. Doesn't necessarily make me a vegan. Right. Right. Veganism is, is, a, yeah. is the practice of abstaining. Right. So this is why we define words that have more in, in more of a, a connotative way to to really get the essence of what we're talking about here. You just don't say, well. You know, you don't eat meat, you're a vegan. Well, no. I mean, vegans usually do also more than abstain from it. They usually try to get other people to, you know, not eat meat. But not, not a necessary condition. But uh, it, it used, the, 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 the whole type of veganism is a large, complicated subject matter. Right? It's not just, oh, I don't eat meat. It's like, no, there's, there's ethical veganism, there's dietary veganism, there's strict vegetarianism, there's, you know, there's a whole bunch of different range. You get two vegans in a room and they're probably going to have different views on certain things. Look, somebody says, ah, you know what? Yeah, I think milk is okay. Oh, no. As long as it's free range milk. As long as it's, it's you, you raise your own. As long as you don't harm the animal, right? No two people are going to have the same beliefs when it comes to this stuff. But it's more than just one thing we have in common, but we don't all believe. Yeah, yeah. So. Veg like vegetarians, they don't just lack meat; they go out of their way to avoid mm -hmm. it. So there's like an actual practice to make sure they don't go near it. It's, so, a, it's, you know. a, it's abstaining, right? It's an action, right? Beliefs beliefs are still something that has to occur. You have to have an intelligent agent to have a belief. Uh, rocks don't qualify. So why would you even want to even say something yeah. along the lines of rocks are? atheist I, or vegan it makes no I, sense it's stupid it waters it down 
Yes. I do have to jump off in a second, Steve. Me I'll too. Just say this before I, before I, before I go. But um, yeah, I have never heard one very good, even halfway cogent argument about the rocks thing. I've never heard one. And, I, I don't and think I'm there not, is one. And I'm not. I'm not a philosopher. I. <laughs> I. You know. I. I would say my logic is uh, not that much better than a lot of the. Than a, I, I'm on a slightly higher par than a lot of the people that are. Uh, um, parroting what Courtney's put out this evening or so on, but not, I'm not, not by much, but I really, well, there was someone, I can't remember who it was, but basically it seemed to be, you know, you, you shouldn't argue against the rocks of atheists because basically, you know, you shouldn't be going against Aaron. That's the kind of crap you get. Yeah. Oh, I had, I've had, I've had, I've had and, people say that. Oh, Ar nobody's ever said that. No atheists ever argue for that. I show them Aaron's thing. And they're like, oh, he's just trolling. Yeah. I'm like, no, he's not. He literally believes this. He, no, he's serious. He's, he's dead serious. on that hill. Yes. I, I've asked him, and I've, I even asked him this on Twitter, and I said, look, Aaron, I have a lot of respect for you, but I do not understand why you want to die on this hill. I just don't get it. Because, because um, it, it's his, okay, I, I, I'm going to put myself into his footsteps for a second. In his mind's eye, because he's had conversations with Bionic Dance, and her reasoning is based upon a False dichotomy, right? In that false dichotomy, they both would be correct. Okay, if you have a dichotomy where you're in one set or the complementary set, there is no other options. That would be true. But what they don't understand, they have they have self-imposed this dichotomous relationship. That's the reason that they're they're stuck. They're painting themselves in a corner. Using their schema, they're not wrong because there are no other categories. Now, when you start getting into more nuanced things. Uh, like even when you get into things like theological and cognitivism, you can have an argument, well, these groups don't even exist. What is a theist group compared to a non-theist group? There's, both groups are nonsensical, yeah. right? They're nonsensical groups because nobody even knows what the hell they mean if they're theological and cognitivist. So a person could say, look, I'm not a theist, nor am I a non-theist, because they have a different epistemic reasoning for that, right? It doesn't mean that you, the sets are wrong. It doesn't mean that there's not a, a complement set there. It just means that they find that both those sets to be nonsensical what what what, is it, what would it mean to be in either set i have set you know bigly waff and not bigly waff what does that mean right that's so there are a lot of nuances of these things so what Aaron has done is he's painted himself in a corner by by promoting this bullshit narrative that there has to be theist or atheist and nothing else you cannot be in any other position because what he's taken is the actual logic of theist and not theist and just changed not theist to mean atheist which yeah. anybody can do I can say atheist or God, not atheist, God. Therefore, everybody who's not an atheist is God. There you go. That's, that's a disjunction. Mm. It's the same well, see, exact thing. Well, see, my issue was, because yeah. we had that atheist whoop-ass or whatever, that guy we talked with on Twitter what, oh my a couple God. weeks ago. I saw some of that. Oh, that guy was... He, do you realize he's, that he, I, he's even, out there? He, well, had, I, he had contradictions in his own tweets. Well, I even jumped in on there because he was like, well, we're all born atheists. How can, how can a baby who has no concept of anything pick a lane? Because they, because they first of all, they don't, they don't understand a no hypothesis. They get that wrong. Um, but second God, of all, yes. yeah, they just, they, they think that because you, because any, anybody who lacks a belief is to them is an atheist that yeah, we know that's wrong. It's bullshit, but they don't care. They're stuck on that. So again, they paint themselves in a corner. And that's why they can't refute the, the wasp argument because the theist can come along and say the same thing. The baby is a theist. Why? Because of negative theism. They lack a belief that God does not exist. And you have to allow that or that is special pleading. I have nobody's been able to argue that it's not special pleading. Yeah, I saw a bit of that and he was almost as bad as um, that clown who, um, that other clown who retorted to you one time. And I, I will never forget this, Steve, because I think it was the, um, you were trying to explain to, to him these concepts and he said and he said i'm not you and his quote quote this is what this person's response to steve was i'm not using philosophy but basic logic yeah i remember that and i had and i had to just come in there and said dude read back what you have just tweeted <laughs> to yourself but very slowly i, I think that um, he, he gave some people an aneurysm it was like what <laughs> I, I, i'm like what on earth do you realize what you have just said here um but yeah, I, uh, this has been the frustrating thing for me for the last few months. That I've really started to see just that the last few months, I've seen more dumb arguments coming off 
really from my own side than I have from theists. <laughs> you know, it, why, do you think, why do you think I call it out? Rock, why do you think I call those uh, out? Yeah, man? whether it be the rock thing or whether it be like the bad history that gets repeated every year and and so on, or you know, like that the ultimate one as I brought up earlier when they start the religion as a mental illness thing. I've just seen this time and time again over the last few months, and it's gotten. I've almost gotten sick of it now. Um, well, that's why we continue the, to call it out. This is why this. I have to do this. Yeah, I, I literally do this about once a week at, anymore because um, well, there's always something new, uh, like Carney doing this trolling stuff. Kawasa says, "Yeah, this yeah. Is the guy. The guy said this literally. He said, I, I never said babies weren't atheists. I said people were born atheists.' It's like." <laughs> Dude, he, I swear to God, he had a oh contradiction. He had a yeah. contra exactly, Kwasi. He had a contradiction in his own thing. He's like, I, I never said babies were born atheists. I said all people were born atheists. Don't wait, wait. Don't don't babies come? I'm, is, I'm, it, is it babies a subset of all people? I'm I'm starting to think that if there is a God, He's actually sent these people here to test our faith. But um, <laughs> right, um, right. But anyway, I mu I must jump off now, Steve. Um, yeah. But yeah, I thought I'd come in and wait, wait two cents in on this because uh, like I said, I've, I've got very frustrated with my fellow atheists over the last few months. And, it, and it's, it, I don't think it's a frustration that's going to go away. Cause no. I think I've had my eyes opened to just how bad some of them are now. Yep. Um, and Courtney so, is, is, is one of the worst uh, at, at this. And this is why I just, I, I'm making the argument that she is just an atheist troll that has nothing of value to add to any discussion. She just does it a troll and she's allowed to do it. And we're still going to be calling her out. I, I have nothing against her personally. Um, oh my God. Mackie said, no, he said, wait, he said some rocks are igne, ig, ig, igneous ostics. <laughs> that's not, that's good. That's funny. Yeah. yeah and Courtney's not going to change. She, she, you know, she's not going to change. She's oh, never, no. Um, but I just want this video out there so people can, you know, if they ever, if, if it ever comes up, Show them this video and say, look, you know, Courtney's just there trolling. She's not to be taken seriously. She doesn't know what the hell she's talking about. She never gets anything right. Philosophically speaking, historically speaking, epistemologically speaking, logically speaking, you know, she has, she has nothing to offer anybody in these conversations. So, yeah. and I think I've, we've probably anyway, demonstrated I'll, um, that. Yep. I'll see, you I'll see you later, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, thanks for letting me in. Bye -bye. Yeah. So this, like this guy uh, that I have on the screen here, says, you know, even says this is so utterly absurd that I'm starting to think Courtney is becoming a troll. Read Graham Oppie's Atheism at the Basics, and you wouldn't, and you would conclude that Courtney is full of shit. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know what? I, so you know, you know what I think I, that leads to a lot of this hmm. is uh, that when people like are religious, they because they have like such a connection to God, they basically feel like they have like a uh, like a line like a like a, a fiber optic line to like the knowledge of all things so they get to know everything the knowledge of the universe they know how everything began they know how everything happened like is evolution real no i know how it all happened i know how everything happened and they take this kind of era uh, or this feeling of all knowledge. And then when they finally like break out and they feel like, uh, Oh, well I, I, now I'm, you know, now I don't believe in that. Now I'm an atheist. They feel like not only, not only do they break out and they, they feel like they have, uh, they've escaped from that, but they take that, that feeling of all of that. They know everything. And they feel like they have, fig they figured everything out. Mm -hmm. Like they don't, they never, they never dropped the the all knowing feeling, but now they feel like an era of superiority that they have figured everything out. But oh. but let me let me let me cue everybody in out there who have, who have broken out of religion. You didn't have everything figured out then. You still don't. You never will. Your brain is stupid. Shut up. <laughs> and it and I'm hoping that uh, whenever I say anything, that you'll let me know the same thing I just told you. Sure. Uh, yeah. Um, Aaron Kamar, who I know is a philosopher, um, he says, I think your holdup is the colloquial use of belief. In epistemology, belief doesn't carry the negative connotations it does in everyday use. I am comfortable with the definition of belief that gods do not exist. It is a justified belief. Justification is necessary, but not sufficient to qualify knowledge. We need to know whether atheism is true. I happen to make the claim that it is. Knowledge is Sarah Paribus to justify true belief. It's a spin on Plato's definition that circumvents Gettier, which uh, he's absolutely right. I, I mean, Sarah Paribus is this Latin for all things being equal. Um, knowledge and justified true belief is pretty much what most people go by for theory of knowledge. So there are others, okay? There are other theories of knowledge, but that is by far the most 
commonly what you find when you read books in epistemology. Um, and he'll, this guy claims that atheism is true. The only way atheism can be true is if atheism is a proposition on the ontological nature of God, right? If it's just psychological position, what does that mean to be true? It means, it means you have that psychological state. But when you say atheism is true, you're saying it is the case that God does not exist. When you say atheism is false, you're saying it is, a, it is the case that God does exist. That's it. And this is, this is why having these terms have utility where you can answer a direct question, does God exist? Yes, you're a theist. No, you're an atheist. Done. If you say, look, I have no position either way. I've, I've, I've tried to figure it out. I, I cannot reach a conclusion. You're agnostic. But there's a nice, a nice virtue to be had, and this is pointed out by Dr. Uh, Draper in SEP, uh, that it has a direct relationship to the question, does God exist? Exist. As a matter of fact, when I had a flow chart a long time ago, and I had that very first thing I started off with was, does God exist? It was Matt Dillahunty that said, oh, Steve's asking the wrong question. And I'm like, no, that is literally the fundamental question called the great debate question. Does God exist or is there a God? That is the definitive understanding of the great debate question. And he said, I got the question wrong. Because he's like, no, the question should be, do you believe in God? No, no, no. <laughs> The question is, is there a God? And if you say no, you're maintaining that you have the belief that there are no gods. You think the proposition is false. You can't do this with, with the, her types of usages. And that's the problem. It's just, it leads to this really bizarre ambiguities. And I don't find why they think that is, it's necessary to be ambiguous like that. What virtue does it have to be ambiguous? Because now when somebody says, uh, I'm an atheist, what do you mean by that? Or if I say, do you believe in God? They'll be like, well... Um, no, and I'll be like, okay, so you're making the claim there are no gods. No, no, I didn't say that. I just lack a belief. All the time. Try it. Ask somebody, do you believe in God? They'll, that, that's a different story, right? We say, do you believe in God? They say, no. Okay, you'd be an atheist or you could be agnostic. Right? Some, or some others, but I mean, for the most part. But if you say, does God exist? They'll, they'll watch them play mind games. They'll be like, oh, but you're just trying to lock me down to saying yes or no. You you just want me to answer a direct question with a direct answer. Well, I would like that, but that doesn't mean you're forced to. You can answer other things than yes or no. But, I mean, I, so let me ask the live chat. Does God exist? How do you answer that? I want everybody in the live chat to answer this question. Does God exist? You can answer any way you want. Yes, no, I don't know. I don't have an opinion. How do you answer that question? So, and, and I'll ask the same question to you guys in here. How do, what, Nikki? I do not believe in any gods. That's not, not my, no, come on. Does God, <laughs> does God exist? No. So she's saying that she believes there are no gods. Now, she's not making that as a knowledge claim. Right? No. Right? So. And I answer no. And your answer no. So, I mean, you guys are making the claims there's no gods. And so when you have somebody out there like the atheist troll, Courtney, going, oh, well, atheists out there making knowledge claims, she's insulting you guys. She's misrepresenting your guys' positions. And, it, it, and see, that's one thing that really irritates me is because, just like I just said, I believe in no gods. How am I, just because I say there's no gods against this, because there's been no evidence for me to believe in that well and that's your just but that's part of your justification right and we, exactly, that's, yeah. that's a lot more complicated but as far as you have the position that we live in a godless universe yep yeah and everybody who's answered no has that same position that we live in a godless universe now the people that say i don't know they have taken the position look <laughs> i i don't i'm not making i i have no i have no position either way on it i don't say there's no gods i don't say there is a god they're agnostic just like me now they can label themselves any way you want this is one thing people have to understand i'm not telling people how to label themselves you can say, look, I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to call myself an atheist. I think it's weird, but to, to each his own, as long as they understand the, the topics is the, is the key point, right? But I answer, I don't know either. I don't have position either way. I'm agnostic. Yeah. Now, by the way, not too many people answered yes, by the way. Kind of interesting. Where's all the theists watching my stuff? But, okay, so the people that answered no, you guys would consider yourselves, you know, the, the, what, the, what atheism is. Um, the people that answered, I don't know, I don't know if they, they identify as atheist or not. You know, but I think it's just interesting that you have Courtney trying to tell atheists that by all the people that answered no that they're making knowledge claims. That's just silly. Absolutely silly. It's offensive. It really is offensive. It's, it's, it's such religiosity that she has the, the audacity 
to to tell atheists you know and people always say well hi steve why do you tell atheists about stuff you know should you ask an atheist i am asking atheists they're the ones that are telling her she's wrong you know why why people say well i i misrepresent i'm misrepresenting atheists how am i doing that said steve you're a mean poopy head it's just it's She's, misrepre she's misrepresenting the topic and at the same time insulting every atheist out there that says, look, gods don't exist. Let me explain to you why. And I'm sure yes. everyone that answered no would be like, yeah, I'm going to tell you why there's no gods. And they could get into some technical stuff and, uh, and arguments from divine hiddenness and uh, evidential problem evil and theoretical virtues. And they could get some really technical stuff. And you know what? Good arguments. Good arguments. She's telling us how to get in line with the ACA and the other atheist <laughs> community. <laughs> Fuck the ACA. Yeah, Raisin Girl says no clue. Anyone who says they do, either way, seems arrogant to me. Well, I, I don't... Uh, hi, Steve. Yeah, hi, they, hi, Raisin. No, I don't think it's arrogance. I think that they... Look, when people make these claims, they're not claiming to have absolute certainty or knowledge. What they're saying is, look, this is my belief. Let me give you the reasons why I believe this. Can beliefs be wrong? Absolutely. Can they be wrong? Yes. If atheism is true... Theism must be false. If theism is true, then atheism must be false. They're contradictories. If they both can't be true, they both can't be false. One of them has to be the case. There's no other options in, in, in logic. And the person who says, look, I, I take the, the road that there are no gods. And let me explain to you why. Nothing wrong with that. That's not arrogance. That's them looking at the evidence. They've, they've come to a conclusion that they've convinced there is no God. I don't find any arrogance in that. I think that's very, very fair very very objective um it's when they don't justify it i have a problem with that it's like oh gods are bullshit and they say well you say well why are they bullshit oh i don't know be you know reasons it's like well you have no reasons to believe that then you're not justified for your belief you know but anyways i'm gonna wrap this up guys because i don't want i want to keep this less than two hours uh this was fun um just before we go though what do you guys think of our first episode for the non sequitur show was it um was it, was it interesting? I thought, I thought uh, Jules did an amazing job telling her story. It was. From what I, I was catching, I was slightly doing another task on another thing, but I was keeping up as best I could, and it was good. I liked it. I, I, I appreciate it. Um, it, it like I said, we, we, we have a lot of things in store. Uh, still moving some things around, but next show uh, is going to be fun. We're going to have um, Dr. Jonathan McGlatchy come on. We're going to talk about uh, Christian-based education and the, um, the really bizarre things that some Christian books have in them about biology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Well, the one I read was great. Uh, well, I didn't read the book. I read an excerpt that somebody had sent me, and it said uh, something along the lines of, um, if evolution was true, uh, evolution claims that birds evolved from octopus, or octopi. What? And I was like, wait, <laughs> wait, who? It, that, 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 that hurt my head. I, I'm not even fronting. It was literally something along the lines of, if birds evolved from octopi, as evolution's claim, Okay, I can understand maybe the beaks, but well, I thought um, the same thing too. But I'm like, <laughs> no, that was just bizarre. It's, yeah, it's... There, there, all life on Earth has a relative in its past, a couple relatives even. We're all related, but, but we're not directly exactly like lineage. Like that's so stupid. Yeah, well, do you remember, yeah, yeah. Before we go, do you remember the phylogeny challenge? Does that ring a bell? No. Yes. Okay, so the phylogeny challenge is something that Aaron. Uh, will challenge creationists to do and it's really actually pretty simple all the all the phylogeny challenges is basically come up with a line of demarcation to where things are no longer related to each other that's it right how far back do we go right i'm related to you you're related to me in some capacity um or shit you let's say let's say take us out of the equation let's say you have like a, a, a pantroglodyte a chimpanzee they do they believe that they're related to other apes okay well how far back on that line do they stop becoming you know, related to something. You know, where where in the historical lines of phylogeny do they draw the line and say, look, after this, there's no relationship. Now they'll make a little chart. I've seen the baromenology charts where they say, here's the line, it's like that, but they don't ever tell you where that line exists, that line of demarcation exists on an axonal tree of phylogeny. So the phylogeny challenge is, okay, where is this line of demarcation where things are no longer related? I think I, it's a, it's still a challenge. It's a great challenge because I don't think it's obviously I don't think it's ever been met, but. But, I but, would like to say that I saw yesterday's episode. I was asleep while you guys were streaming in my computer chair. Mm -hmm. I am um, I'm having medication 
issues. Uh, I'm hopefully getting over them soon. I'm on my right medication now, Good. and everything should be smoothing out. I'm hoping. Uh, so oh, I won't shouldn't miss the next one. But I thought it was awesome. Um, uh, the story was scary. Uh, I I really hope like I really hope for more information about that guy. Yeah, I'm, I don't. Uh, I, 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 like I said, I'm going to follow up a little bit. Um, but um, I, I, every show is going to be hopefully you know a little bit different. I got I want a little bit of variety, so I've got all kinds of different things. That's why it's a non sequitur show, right? Not one size fits all. Um, so, but I'm just glad to be back. I I enjoyed it. Uh, it was fun. Uh, good good guest. Uh, heavy hitting topic, but. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to end the live, uh, the, uh, the hangout here, and I'm going to wrap it up. So I want to thank you for joining it. Yep, Mr. No Sirius problem. and Nikki. All right, and I'm, I will. Thanks for having me. All right, bye. All right, guys, thanks for watching this again. You know, I do do these about once a week, only because I find some, you know, atheist out there that just wants to be the edgy, edgy, edgy edge, edge lord uh, that wants to speak for atheism and yet does a disservice to atheists because they're basically lying to other atheists in order to promote their own uh, religion because to me they're she's just courtney is just religious she's just an, a, a religious nutter but her religion of choice is uh her uh, misunderstanding of atheism uh, i have nothing against her personally this is not a personal attack she's been she's always been nice to me um i'm cordial to her in return i have never never once uh, insulted her uh, or, you know, gone personal with her, and she hasn't with me. I hope we can keep that up. But I am going to call out when she does stuff like this every so often, even though that's what she wants. That's why she does it. But at least you guys can see now that Courtney is just somebody who should never be ever taken seriously. And anytime that she says something like this, oh, you got to just put this video up for, for the new people that come on Twitter and go, oh, yeah, Courtney, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. He'd be like, no, it doesn't. Here's a two hour video from Steve. Go watch it and it'll explain why, you know, Courtney's just. You know, a, a, a troll of no consequence that's just spewing things out there to get a rise out of people, which is no different than a flat earther, no different than any of the, the trolls that we see 90% of the time that just want a reaction. So with that, guys, I'm going to end this, and uh, I will see you later. Bye.